You're watching the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. Now it's time for the Brandon Austin Show. And we are back at Best Bet St. Augustine for a Friday show. Can't uh, wait to get to everybody's brackets, including these standings right here. Did we pick the right one? Jags are back. Zach Fortner, that's the one I'm keeping an eye on because he's the one that can beat us and cost me money. And then, of course, mine and Hamby's. Hamby jumped in front of me since I checked this uh, yesterday. He jumped back into the lead. What? What's your name on the... Uh, Bracket. Straight cash homies. Straight been, cash homies? Yeah, it's been that since, like, Randy Moss said that quote, which was, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago now, I feel like. So I've had the same name on the ESPN app for a while now. All right. Uh, well, you and I are uh, tied, and we're right in the middle of this thing. Yeah, but actually, I, got, early. I had the dr- Drake fizzle down the stretch. Um, I got a break when Nevada lost down the stretch, so I kind of swapped those two out. And if I had uh, Drake win, I think I'd be a little bit higher. In fact, Hamby would be lower, but that's okay. Uh, I took one for the team for Ty. He said he had uh, Drake, no, uh, who did they play? Uh, Washington State. Washington State. Going all the way to the uh, Sweet 16 or Elite 8. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy about that, but uh, go ahead and get a win and make you feel a little bit better and sleep better. Hey, everybody, welcome to Best Bet St. Augustine. Brent Martin, along with Austin Lane, Brent and Austin Show. We're here. A little kind of swiveled around, a little different location here uh, for the show today because we can do that here. You got a little bit of everything. You got the table games over there. You got the poker room over there. You've got the paramutual and TVs, and this is where the games are at right here in this little setting while you have some lunch. And you can do that with us today. We'll be here until 1 o'clock here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Had a lot of fun yesterday and uh, doing the same today. And once again, the lucky seat winner today, 12 p.m. until midnight, every half hour. Someone's going to tap you on the shoulder if you're sitting down in that room. 100 bucks your way, potentially. So uh, grab a seat, get lucky, and, uh, well... Hang out with us at Best Bet St. Augustine. All right, uh, listen, this is uh, this is an interesting time of the year. I think everything, you know, around the, uh, the Super Bowl, where everything kind of shuts down a little bit mm-hmm. in the rest of the sports world, I think March Madness has created that a little bit, where Thursday and Friday especially, uh, even the NFL has said, it's okay, yeah. we got all our stuff done. Like, there's not a lot of news happening in the NFL right now. We're taking our breath before we gear up for the NFL draft. Now, there are some pro days. There's a big Michigan pro day today. Sure. There was Caleb Williams pro day yesterday. Uh, Gators pro day yesterday, which was very unassuming, by the way. Uh, at the University of Florida, we talked about wide receivers a bunch. I, I think wide receiver could be in play for Michigan, so the Jags might be peaking up there. They've got a bunch of players, obviously, coming off a national championship uh, that will head to the NFL draft so there's a little bit of that kind of stuff going on i mean but the headline is definitely uh march madness ncaa tournament and we got everything that we love about this tournament in round number one didn't we i mean maybe we didn't get a buzzer beater but we got great games we got cinderella we yep. got the big boy knocked off and we got the who's that guy we got the 40 year run of a coach that went from division two to the horizon league to upset in kentucky yeah uh we got the long beach state and the whole gonzaga tree going on there with what's uh with munson and he says sayonara after he got fired. They made it to the tournament. The AD says, I was smart for doing that. I motivated them to do that. Oh, idiot. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that's what we got. We got all that on round number one. Hello, college basketball. Hello, college basketball, man. Shout out to my former cousin-in-law, Marcus Damask, dropping a triple-double. That was wow. really cool to watch, man. I mean, he's had a great season all year for Illinois. Uh, but now, surprising, too, only one of nine players to drop a triple-double in the NCAA tournament. I figured it would have been a lot more than that. The last player to do it since John Murray. Rand, so he's in good company there. That was cool to watch. So who did, you, did you say it's your cousin? Former uh, former cousin-in-law, it would have been. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I went to watch him in high school a couple times. I remember you talking on. about him. Yeah. Yep, so he went to uh, SIU for four years, had the COVID, you know, transfer and everything like that. Went to Illinois and uh, is doing a thing in Illinois now. Yeah, um, you also have like another family member that's a big time, like a good pitcher, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he's retired now. He's actually coaching. For, okay. Um, like a I think like a double A club, but no. So Marcus went to SIU for four years, and then Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin. Wisconsin didn't recruit him. Goes to Illinois, and I was doing his thing. So. How about that triple Wisconsin, double? But it was yeah. like twelve points or eleven points. He got it late. Maybe he had three. So it was twelve points and like uh, 10, 11 rebounds, ten assists, or ten rebounds, ten assists. Yeah, that was pretty wild. Now, that John Morant's the last guy to do that. It's pretty wild. Now they also kind of helped him out a little bit in terms. Yeah, of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you they were getting like, they're, they're padding it a little bit, but man, nevertheless, uh, he's still in great company. I think John Morant before that was Draymond Green, which was back in like two thousand twice. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, isn't that nuts, though? No triple doubles in college basketball. Is there wow. just not enough scoring for that? Is that why? I mean, usually that's the case, I feel like, but also... You know, guys kind of have their assigned roles, right? Like, you're not going to find a guard usually that's going to run the point but also be down low getting rebounds as well. You know I mean? You can see, you know, assists and everything, but I think it's rare to have a guard that can do it all. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting, though, because the game has changed so much in the NBA where a triple doubles like having, like, a 15-point night now. I mean, yeah. it is just – it used to be a big thing, right? Mm-hmm. And now everybody's doing it, and, and some doing it at a crazy clip. So – like you'd think that would translate a little bit to the end of uh, the the college game. The college game has opened up more. There's definitely more scoring as you're seeing, and I think that makes for an entertaining brand. You're not getting the 58, 55 as much as you're now getting into the 70s and 80s, and that's intentional uh, by college basketball to do so. So you just think some of the numbers you listen. I take a guy here in, in Jacksonville, UNF's uh, Chaz Lanier. Yeah, right. He can really shoot it, but he's got an inside game. He can rebound the basketball. Now he's not six ten, but he he's. What, six six, six seven, six six probably. Mm-hmm. And he can shoot it from downtown. He handles the ball a lot. Like everybody can handle the ball. And it seems like everybody can shoot now. So you'd think grabbing that rebounds might be the trickiest part. Uh, or maybe when you're that good, your ball the ball's in your hand so much and you're the shooter more than the passer, unlike the NBA. I mean, I'm trying to figure out why, but it seems like we should have more triple doubles in the NCAA tournament than like every seven years. You yeah, know, for sure. Traditionally I feel like the triple doubles, I mean, John Morant was a, a different type of beast in the tournament just because like the whole game ran through him yeah yeah you know like with illinois and marcus damask it's a little different where they have a lot of shooters they have a lot of great players where they don't have to run the whole game through marcus um i think of like joker you know um i mean they have great shooters jamal murray's up there obviously but like the whole game runs through him whether he's posting up whether he's passing like his, his court vision is just unreal so yeah i think once it gets to the next level I don't want to say it's more of a big man stat because, once again, Russell Westbrook in the past has done it. Luka does it, like, every other night, it seems like. But I think very rarely do you have guys in college that have to do it all because usually you have big men that get the rebounds as well. So, overall, what do you think uh, of day one? I loved it. I mean, it had a little bit of everything. It had the who's who. Uh, It had who is this guy. I mean, literally a guy who, once again, from the great state of Wisconsin – Literally just tore apart the Kentucky Wildcats. Mm. Ten three-pointers made. Um, I saw somebody on Twitter said, like, how do you let a door dasher beat <laughs> the entire state of Kentucky? And I agree, man. And it's, it's kind of the, the calling card. Listen, as someone who went to Murray State, who knows all about Kentucky, how they feel about their basketball, whether it's high school or collegiate, like, that state lives for its basketball. And the fact that they seem like they're cursed, they can't get out of the first round, they have these highly touted players year in and year out, but they can't do anything with it, man, not a good day to be a Kentucky fan. And you better believe, Brent, I was in there last night on those Twitter comments just <laughs> relishing, relishing, having the having that good sleep after those comments I saw last night. It's interesting. I don't dislike John Calipari. I think uh, it's easy to dislike the the guys that are at the top of it. That's not me. Uh, It it is what it is. Um, He's been a fantastic coach for a long, long time. It is crazy they can't win this time of year. I mean, that is nuts. What's going on the last, uh, I don't know, what is it now? I mean, definitely since 19, but really even before that a little bit. You know, if I remember correctly, the one national championship he's got there, they were like a seven seed. Anthony Davis, 2012. Was, weren't they a seven seed, Hampy? I don't know seeding, but it was the Anthony Davis year, 2012. I was looking at it earlier. I'll check that. Maybe they didn't win the title the year they were like a seven seed. And kind of, because I really I remember talking about Calipari at the time that they were like a seven eight seed. They were they they weren't great all year, but they were getting better and better. And then they made a run in the tournament. Maybe I'm mistaken. They didn't win it that year, but I know they made a deep run. And I thought that was. Like one of his b- best coaching jobs. I mean, that was like you took a young team and then you developed them, and you can see what, you know, how good of a coach you are. I think that way. It's easy kind of to get just the old talented and be better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Although maybe that's not easy either, especially in today's college basketball. But this is kind of stunning that they can't win a game. I mean, that, I don't care about – we'll talk about young versus old, and that's definitely changed. We had Andrew Catalan on last week, and he indicated that's changed the game a little bit uh, right now in college basketball, the current landscape. But come on. I mean, when you have NBA guys playing against guys that might be DoorDash guys or future accountants, you shouldn't be bounced out of the tournament every year. No, you shouldn't be, but I think it's really telling. I think um, I listened to Jay Williams talk about this after that game, and – 
essentially what it is is you have high schoolers playing against grown men, especially now, you know, with that COVID year, you get an extra year. You have, you know, fifth-year seniors taking on freshmen, and that is a difference. It's a difference in terms of physicality. It's a dif- difference between mindset. And it's a difference between experience. So I really do that. That makes all the difference in the world. Like, listen, if you have four or five guys that, that will be drafted in the NBA, of course you're going to win games. Like, that's just that's a fact of life because you have too much talent not to win games. But to make a deep run in the tournament, it's more than just talent as we've seen year in and year out. It is chemistry. It is experience. It is physicality. And last night, you saw a Kentucky team that was inexperienced, that folded under pressure, and couldn't handle the big moment. Yeah, I mean, you bring up some good points. I mean, I guess we just go right into that. Well, I mean, what does it mean for Kentucky? I don't know. Is it the landscape of college basketball that, again, this is why I said March is going to be nuts because the landscape does matter. This is not a new thing that older teams matter. This is why Butler kind of came on the scene and was able to do that because they kept their team together, no one and duns, right? I mean, this is not unique to college basketball, but it is unique in the college landscape right now to have 25 year old kids playing 24 year old kids playing the transfer portal where this kid yeah. last night comes out of like division two no star guy and all of a sudden he can shoot the lights out you know he's taken like no two pointers all year yeah, Hamby yeah. gave us a stat line wow. of them i mean nothing so you can do that collect those guys experience they have no fear mm-hmm. i just talked about this with joe mercanante we had no gate fees the other day and, and we had him in and we we're talking baseball and it's like the guy's even the the teams up north right now in college baseball seemingly are playing really good baseball. When they come down south, it used to be you get whacked, right? Because yeah. the southern teams are just better. They've been playing all year round. You've been indoors. Not really the case right now. And he even indicated it's a little bit of an age thing. I mean, you've got guys that have 400 career at bats. They've seen it all, man. I mean, they're not too impressed by you anymore. And I think it's the same thing in college hoops. Whatever level you've played, the AAU circuit, every level of growing up, and now you get a collection of those guys that aren't afraid of anything, that, like you said, are physically mature, that have the IQ, and are just maybe know the game better. It seems like it trumps talent. Yeah, it absolutely does. You know, And then as a coach or as an athletic director, whatever you want to call it, you have to decide which road you want to take, right? Because you have the road of Kentucky where they have all the talent in the world. They get all the recruits you could ever imagine, but they don't win the big one. They don't go to the big one. When's the last time they've been to the Final Four? But in terms of a branding standpoint, when you see all these guys in the NBA that rep Kentucky, like that only helps out the program as well. As opposed to a team like, let's say, Wisconsin. Wisconsin doesn't have a one-and-done player at You know, they, they, they build them up for four or five years, or whatever the case, been into the program, and sometimes they can have some good success. But it's completely different. I don't know which one is better. Because I look at what John Morant did for Murray State, and it's like, well, John Morant put Murray State on the map. And then look what happened after John Morant in terms of, you know, having some other recruits come in and replace him. I don't know what the answer is. Like, I get Kentucky fans want to win the big one. How could you not? But at the same time, your brand is so big because of the players that you bring in there. So I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's, hey, do you say all these five-star recruits? Ah, man, let's get some four- or three-star recruits and build through the program a little bit, maybe won't be as popular at the next level, but we'll win a lot more, or do we get all those high-valued recruits, not win, but still put on for the brand? So does Kentucky need a change? Because Calipari, much like Virginia and Bennett the other day, Virginia and Bennett, when they lost, said, hey, we got to take a look at our system a little bit, right? We said, who the heck would want to play for Virginia? I mean, with that system, you are playing an Ivy League, Princeton-style game in a modern day where we're trying to score 80 points a game, 90 points a game, and get scoring up and have fun and run up and down the court uh, in in college basketball. Does Calipari need to change the way? Does he need to recruit? Yeah, okay. We got stars, mm-hmm. one-and-done potentials, but we also need like a certain amount of core players that are going to create our program and, and be with us to establish culture. I mean, if I'm the AD of Kentucky and I take a look through the whole scope here, it's hard to justify saying, hey, John, let's stop having a top-five recruiting <laughs> class every single year. Let's, let's take our foot off the gas a little bit and let's get you know, these three-star recruits. It's hard to justify that. So I'm not sure what the answer is. I mean, to me, it depends what you're looking for. 
If you're looking for a championship, then guess what? All these five-star recruits, these big names coming in, probably aren't going to get it done because they're there for a year and then they're gone. And then you have to reload again. So if the championship's the goal, then yeah, take a strong, hard look at Calipari and say, your recruiting is off the charts. But I think your coaching maybe leaves less to be desired and maybe go in a different direction. But if you're happy year in, year out, being the talk of college basketball in the preseason uh, and being the top 10 coaches polls every single year, then keep doing what you're doing. Listen, he's not alone. Uh, the SEC was very good this year. They went one and three yesterday. Tennessee uh, put a whooping on their game. But outside of that, South Carolina lost to an 11 seed. Uh, Mississippi State was in that 8-9 territory. So, I mean, that, that's always tough. And then, obviously, Kentucky getting ousted. I mean, the SEC uh, obviously loves to boast <laughs> when the things are going well. But right now, they're not sitting pretty here on a Friday morning. <laughs> and And... and Right now, they don't look great. Now they've got Florida going today. They've got other teams going today. So we'll see what happens, see if they can correct it. And really, if you end up with teams in the Sweet 16 or Elite 8, Final Four, they can carry the mantle for you anyway. And I think Tennessee actually has a chance to do that. I'm a big fan of Rick Barnes as a coach this time of year. So we'll see um, what ends up happening. But it's the nature of the beast, man, the NCAA tournament. You just never know. And we did get a little bit of everything. We got the 40-year-long coach at the same school, not jumping around for jobs, seen him through the D2 level. Uh, I legit called like Ashland Oakland games oh, in nice. college. Yeah, like yeah, they were yeah. in our conference. Where is Oakland, by the way? In Michigan. Okay, it's Michigan. And and so like I I've seen their progression. I think when I was getting out, they were starting to make the transition to D one. And I think they ended up in like the Horizon League and and they've grown their program. And they've been here before. They've knocked on the door before, but that was obviously a heck of a win to beat Kentucky. Uh he makes a name for himself. They had a very subdued locker room too. Like I, the, love that. I mean they, they like they think they're gonna win another one and I'm I'm not so sure I'd be surprised if they did. Yeah, well it was wild because when they were up by I think it was four with like maybe ten seconds seconds 12 seconds left and the players started going to the crowd and celebrating the coach went absolutely ballistic <laughs> and like even to the point where the players like hey can we just enjoy this moment a little bit so i, I love the demeanor there i love the attitude that he's bringing um and then uh, the, you know the, the, the guy uh, at the end uh, the player who dropped whatever thir- uh, 10 threes i forgot his name already i mean that's how much <laughs> of, a, of a non-fact that he's been all season in college basketball becomes a star being kentucky but he goes where we're not a cinderella yeah and, great uh, line um what's his name jack uh, uh, jake Oki. jake Oki, yeah yeah so which is the most wisconsin name of all time <laughs> <laughs> kind of is. By the way, but uh, he's a well, legend now. I yeah. mean, he's a legend. But once again, this is what happens when you have guys with experience. This is what happens when you have guys that you know that have been around the game of basketball for a while. This is what you get. Yeah, I thought the quality of play was pretty good, absolutely entertaining, and and we got everything that you want. Can we get it again on a Friday? You know, it's very interesting here when it came best bet. Uh, about 9.15, and everybody's kind of milled. They don't open till just now, till 10 o'clock here, Best Bet St. Augustine. And I thought it was very interesting because you always talk about the water cooler, but I'm not really a guy that's ever lived at the water cooler. Like, I don't have that job, mm-hmm. right, that mm-hmm. you're uh, maybe you're a teacher and you're meeting in before school and everybody's kind of getting stuff and you're talking about what went on the night before, whether it's American Idol or sports or something in the news, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the whole water cooler thing. Well, it was fascinating to listen because it's it's – there's like 10 people in here and everybody's talking about the goalkeeper kid. Yeah. And everybody's yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about watching the games. Everybody's talking about it. It's like, no doubt today he's that water cooler guy. I mean, people are Googling him. People are going to know the name. People are going to, they probably forget the name by, well, right now. And then in five years, we're going to remember the performance. So yeah. then that's what the tournament does. You get reminded of it. I was watching, I think on true TV, they had, they, they end up doing like a whole documentary on UMBC beating Virginia. Yeah. Like a revisit to that. Mm-hmm. And, Again, we remember these things. That's what it's hey, all about. Hey, Hamby, do you got any uh, sound from Jack Olkey with the, the post-game uh, little speech that he gave? Obviously, we come in, we're the, the underdog by uh, all measures, but uh, you just got to, as a player, you can't think that way. You got to go out there and you got to think that you have the same talent level as them. I know they have draft picks, and I know I'm not going to the NBA, but uh, I know on any given night I can compete with those type of guys and our team can compete with those type of guys. And that's why I was so confident going into it. And that's why I say we're not a Cinderella because when we play our A game, we're, we can be the best team on the floor. 
He did a great job there, by the way, of not giving bulletin board material like we could be the best team in the country. No, we'd be the best team on the floor. I mean, he handled that really well, the, the whole thing. Yeah. And I don't disagree with him. Again, I, I think we're living in a world now, and, and we know this. We see this. We see this in, in the baseball, softball world. Like, just because you're not going to, like, a D1 school or whatever doesn't mean you can't play with guys like that or gals like that that are playing at that level. I mean, we see this travel world that everybody lives in, the AAU world that you grew up in, which really started this all, mm-hmm. it feels like, in basketball. These guys all play against each other. I mean, you played against some big-time players, yeah, and you yeah. were playing on the same floor as them, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. playing, right? Yeah. And contributing yeah. and not looking embarrassed, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like... It's a real deal thing. Now, can you get a collection of them? Can yeah. you get five of them? Or can you go deep enough? And can you hit the shots? And is your scheme okay? Do you have this major mismatch? That's what this stuff all comes down to, really. If you don't have a major mismatch, well, then you could have a major upset. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like You saw it last night with Kentucky. Like In terms of size and everything, you couldn't drive the lane to save your life against Kentucky because they're so long and so tall. But, hey, the three-pointer is the ultimate equalizer. And you saw that last night from, uh, from Mr. Gulky himself. Not only that, though, I actually thought they were better on the interior in the last like six, seven minutes of that game. I mean, yeah. dude misses a dunk. He was playing terrible defense for Kentucky down on the post. They were actually the little guys were YMCAing them. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, seriously, they were. They were just outsmarting them. It shows the IQ, right? The feel of the game. I thought you, I thought that showed up yesterday uh, late. And then you start squeezing, man. Kentucky yeah. starts squeezing. That's just a natural thing. They're like, great, we're going to be the latest. You don't want to be that one. No. And when it gets down to at the end, well, yeah. you, the shot in the corner, though, was ridiculous. And that wasn't Goki, I don't think. But No, no, that was, that was a different guy. <laughs> um, and I forgot that guy's name, too. But that was a cool story, too, because his dad is like the photographer for the team. Yeah, so then they kept stuff. zooming to his dad, and then he misses a free throw and his dad's like oh careful now game's on the line uh, <laughs> he's so like yeah, one I mean, of the first recruits or yeah, something right so yeah. like that's listen it's that's why march madness is so great because you take the upsets you take the underdogs but there's so many stories behind you know these teams as well that you get to know and like you don't necessarily get all that in college football yeah right there's too much going on too physical too many players things like that like that's why you know No helmets, no pads, just the bright lights, nothing to hide behind, uh, and these players' stories, man. And and when it adds up to a big upset, it's a beautiful thing. I tried to tell you guys last week when we had Catalan on, who called the game last night, Kentucky and Oakland, if he gets a game, it's going to be a barn burner. Mm -hmm. It was. And then he got 11 beating six with NC State over Texas Tech on the nightcap, which was less dramatic, but still an upset. I mean... If you listen to Catalan, hang on for the end because you know it's going to be a big one. I mean, it happens in the NFL. It happens in college basketball every year. I mean, my man gets these games that are just unbelievable. He was actually sharing the the story of um, I think he got St. Peter's when they won as, okay. as a 15, and then a crazy game last year that followed it. They got like two in the same night. I think he was saying Memphis game last year was just nuts. So uh, good stuff to start uh, round one of the NCAA tournament. Okay, we'll take a look at our brackets throughout the show a little bit later on. I do have one more question on this, and then we'll hit some other topics. We're getting a question about Otani. What's the latest on that? Um, and I'm not sure there really is a latest, but uh, someone asked our take, so we'll answer that question. When we come back, this – kind of came into my mind yesterday later at night in about five or ten years will the kids or the younger generation whatever you classify that as will they think or know kentucky is a big brand Mm -hmm. in basketball duke those kind of schools are we starting to see a shift in a shift that will say yeah they'll always be considered blue bloods but if you're a youngster of any kind you have no clue that those guys were really, 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 really good at basketball. You mentioned brand. Is the brand still big? Will it be big for Kentucky and other schools like that in college basketball? We'll talk a little bit about Obviously, that. And maybe even how that bleeds over to some by, other uh, uh, other uh, sports as well. We're live at Best Bet St. Augustine. We'll talk a little NCAA tournament. Give us your thoughts as well. Always jump in on all the social media, and you can check us out on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network on the Action News Jacks app and actionnewsjacks.com. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnik Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnik family. We've purchased six different vehicles. 
from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimdick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as Better People, Better Projects just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-701-7549. Better Exterior Solutions, experience better. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief, Mike Burrish, voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you in a Kia. And Michael Monsiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability, three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. 
Hey, welcome back uh, to Best Bet St. Augustine, and there's the studios. We're not there, so uh, we'll talk some Jags. Jags a little bit quiet. Uh, we always will talk a little bit of Jags, but uh, a little quiet late in the week here after it's been a very busy couple of weeks for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hello, and uh, happy Friday, everybody. Hope you had a good day. One of the NCAA tournament. Hope your bracket looks good. We're hanging out at Best Bet St. Augustine again. Just open the doors at 10 a.m. Just open the show at 10 a.m. for us, and... Uh, Oh, very good. It's kind of a cool story. They got a group of guys that come in, uh, usually the first ones in, okay. uh, down here and, and, and hit the tables, um, if they're not golfing. So, uh, saw those guys coming in early today. And, uh, once again, want to tell you, if you get here between noon and midnight today, all day, every half hour, lucky seat winner, $100, and, uh, you're at the seat, they'll, Tap you on the shoulder. You're a lucky winner. You get a hundred bucks. Boom, just like that. Uh, as you're playing table games or uh, in the poker uh, room area, and Best Bet St. Augustine, the place to do all that. Brent Bartno, Austin Lane, Brent and Austin show. We're talking NCAA tournament, and Kentucky has this kind of all, you know. A bunch of angles come off the Kentucky loss. Let's just say that mm-hmm. from Calipari. I mean, listen, in Lexington today must be some kind of amazing. Yeah, whatever they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, because they're probably want Calipari's head. Correct. He's got like a $33 million buyout, by the way. So good luck with that. But my guess is the way Kentucky feels about basketball, if they really wanted to do something, they would. I just doubt they do. Yeah. Um, but it got me thinking more about the blue blood nature of Kentucky. And Duke recently has been, since shashevsky has gone, and even in the later years of Shashevsky. Like, do you have faith that Duke's going to win? Do you feel like they're going to get upset? I actually feel like they'll probably get upset more than they're going to win or make a deep run right now. I think we feel that way about Kentucky. Um, There's probably other schools. And so the question is, in five years, if you're a 15-year-old kid, 20-year-old kid watching the NCAA tournament, maybe a 25-year-old kid for that matter, Mm -hmm. do you even realize that Kentucky was Kentucky? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it all depends on how much you, you know in your history. You know, like, obviously, when I was a kid, I wasn't around for Wooden and UCLA, but, like, every time I played basketball, a coach would always remind me, like, hey, you know, like, this was the coach. These were the teams back yeah, then in UCLA. Yeah. Um, I feel like nowadays, like, even my son, who wasn't alive from Miami – knows a little bit about the Miami Hurricanes and, like, what they meant in terms of, quote-unquote, being the bad boys yeah. a little bit, you know, and kind of bringing some swag to college football. So I just feel like if you're historic, if you're different, if you're polarizing, you can stand the test of time. Now, to answer your question about Kentucky, I mean, yeah, I think the, their players aren't they've been able to produce in the NBA – will always like keep them in conversation, will keep them to be rememberable, but they also haven't really won in a while. And I think that that means everything. So I, to answer your question, I'm not sure about Kentucky. Um, I think Duke, their storied history, I think Duke will always be that because they're at the New York Yankees, right? Like People love to hate them. Yeah, yeah. I think Duke will always be Duke. I think eventually Kentucky will always be Kentucky. But it, to me, it's about winning. Yeah, it's, and I don't know how long it takes to get there. I don't know exactly what goes into it. Like, Duke is interesting because it's a fun place to see on TV. So if you're watching TV, if you're watching social media, you're like, hey, I want to go to a game there. So, and, and you're right. There is that polarizing nature. I also think this time of year, we're going to get reminded of Christian Leitner, right, like every year and that story. And people, I think they'll, they'll kind of know because of March who Christian Leitner is. I'm not sure there's one uh, – you know, at Kentucky that people are like, oh, yeah, I know X player. Maybe it's the NBA guys that everybody knows because they continue to make it to the NBA do well, so they know Kentucky is is really good. But you just brought it up. I mean, UCLA, if you don't know John Wooden, I mean, everybody I think knows John Wooden to some degree. It's like a Vince Lombardi. Mm -hmm. But UCLA hasn't been a monster in college basketball I mean, almost for my lifetime. Now, they've been good here or there, yeah. but they have not been like consistently what they were. I mean, they were UCLA basketball, and now you say they were UCLA basketball. Yeah. It's not like they are. I'll give you another example, Georgetown. I mean, Georgetown, sure. when I was a kid, when you were I mean, from Patrick Ewing to Allen Iverson, Georgetown was Georgetown. Mm-hmm. I don't think kids even know Georgetown exists as a school now. Yeah. 
I mean, do they even know they have a basketball team? Yeah. That's kind of the point of this. Syracuse, I think, is is one like that. Would pop up, you know, and, and maybe this is a little biased for me because of the, the Big East stuff. But now that Bayheim's gone, they've been very average, I think, the last couple of years. Okay, but not great. Are they on the – do people know who they are? Uh, will Michigan State – kind of lose its luster when Izzo eventually goes. Mm-hmm. I think you just can't, you get that flip a little bit somewhere along the way. Um, you know, Notre Dame used to be Notre Dame in football. Miami used to be no- Miami in football. And then there's a big absence mm-hmm. for a long time. What's interesting about Notre Dame is they've kind of rallied. And over the last five, six, seven years, they're back in the, the forefront of college football. So I, I think you could take – Make the case for Michigan being the same way. I mean, outside the Michigan Ohio State game, where they used to get stomped all the time. Sure. I mean, Michigan. If you go way back, the Bo Schembechler days. I mean, Michigan was a huge brand. Now they still are, but I'm talking about how it registers with the younger audience. Do they even well, know this? And yeah. is that a cyclical thing, or will we see it more like UCLA, where UCLA will never duplicate? I found it interesting. You just said Miami because Miami's having a really hard time trying to duplicate or even get back to a very consistent part of the narrative. In college football yeah for sure I, I think nowadays though too it's different right like when i was a kid michigan was big just because they're always on tv nowadays with streaming and everything on your cell phone i mean you can literally watch any game you want to so like i was almost like force-fed michigan growing up so like, i grew up with you know brian greasy and and anthony thomas and uh charles woodson and all those guys and then they were you know big parts of like me being a college football fan I think nowadays you, you're you can have so much more access. Like for instance, my son's an Oregon fan. Yeah, right. He yeah, loves yeah. Oregon. Yeah. I, I I didn't even know who Oregon was when I was his age, just because they were <laughs> yeah, never on TV. Point. That's never a really good it. point. So, I just think the access now leads you to just, uh, so many more possibilities and being a fan of teams and being a fan of players and stuff. Where you probably aren't going to get like the 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 force fed Michigan or, or the force fed even Miami back in the day now because. Access is everywhere. Well, uh, you know, somebody just said on the chat uh, that, hey, Brent, they went to three straight Final Fours, UCLA. And, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, they, they just played in what, 2000? Well, they did in 21, but in yeah. 6, 7, 8, he's saying with Love and Westbrook. Oh, okay. They yeah, went yeah. to three straight Final Fours. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a very good point. But you're actually helping me make my point. Like, my kid is going, is a senior in high school. Mm-hmm. He was two, three, four years old at 6, 7, and 8 mm-hmm. in 2006, 7, 8. He has no clue about UCLA until 2021. They're a one-off thing. They're no different for him than George Mason or Florida Atlantic. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, that's actually my point. And before 2006, 7, and 8, UCLA had been to a Final Four in 95 and hadn't been to a Final Four since 1980. Hmm. So, again, we understand it. You know UCLA. My point is, is this next generation knowing UCLA the way we did? I don't think so. I think your point about Oregon is the flip side of this. It's a, You can get access to anybody. You can be a fan of anybody. It doesn't have to be regional where your TV is showing mm-hmm. you X game. You know, just to go back to the point of Florida, like Florida basketball won back-to-back national championships at the same time that UCLA was in. Nobody's thinking of them as like, this basketball school, house. right? For sure. So it's it's interesting to me just because Kentucky, the longer this goes, if they don't win one yeah. and you're not reminded of it, where are they going to go? Do they go into this little abyss, which is which is really what UCLA did uh, for for decades outside of an occasional peak and pop? Yeah, I mean, I think Kentucky will always be there just from the standpoint of that's all they really have. I mean, with all due respect to the football and everything as yeah, well. Football's gotten like, a lot better. It's gotten a lot better, but, man, Kentucky's a, it's a basketball state, right? It's like Indiana. Like, Indiana, you know, I mean, they haven't been relevant, I feel like, in a long time. Yeah, that's but like, that's another one. Yeah, but they're like I, I still grew up with knowing Indiana Hoosier. I mean, the movie Hoosiers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I grew up with. So um, I just think, like, there's always going to be those teams that have that support, that have those traditions, that have that fan base. They're always going to kind of help propel them into the next generations. Yeah, it's. It, I think you're right. I think they're always going to try. But what I wonder about programs like this, well, I always said about Miami. Miami, and they're trying. I thought like they're not trying to get back. Mm-hmm. Like They're trying to put more resources into it. They've tried over the years. I mean, the game has changed. The money has changed. Everything has changed. And really what I think has hurt Miami the most part in football, trying to get back to be Miami, it wouldn't be allowed today. You yeah. couldn't be the bad boy Miami team, the bully on the block in today's landscape. 
you wouldn't be allowed to do it. So I think they were allowed at a perfect time, and it's probably 30 for 30s out on that or whatever, at the perfect time, uh, maybe from a pop culture standpoint, from a college football standpoint, from a society standpoint. Like there's sometimes that like, you hit the perfect time. Mm-hmm. And uh, UCLA might have done that back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Miami did it. But I don't, the way Miami did it, I just think is really hard to duplicate. And now I think we're seeing a little bit of the situation and the world of sports and the evolution of the game even change for the Dukes and the Kentuckys of the world. Uh, Duke held off. Remember going one and done, guys. And then Krzyzewski's like, I got to play this game. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do it. What will they have to do to keep up with everybody else? Or they're going to get knocked off by the Oaklands of the world, and who knows if even Duke will survive today. Yeah, I just think with like the transfer portal now, um, guys opting to go to the NBA so early, I don't think you're really going to ever see like a dynasty. dynasty I mean, yeah. like we're talking about UConn right now being the first team to go back to back since Florida, which you know we were, very well could happen. They're a favorite for a reason. But like in terms of a dynasty, in terms of you know being in the Final Four year in and year out, a la like Wooden had. I mean, that's never, that will never be replicated. That was again. a crazy run. Yeah. I mean, that was like maybe what we'd see with the Patriots, right? Although yeah. we ask if the Chiefs are doing it or can do it. Mm-hmm. I doubt they can because even the age of Andy Reid alone will dictate that they can't go for as long a run as the Patriots. I think what we just saw with the Patriots was such an outlier. I don't think it will ever be duplicated. You bring up uh, UConn, which I actually think UConn's a fascinating deal because they are one that in 1999 under Jim Calhoun, they won their first national championship. Was that with uh, Anameka Oka? For? I don't know which. No, that wouldn't have been Okafor in the first one. 99? Okay, maybe not. I don't then. think so. Okay. Um, but they won again in 2004, and then in 2011, and 2014, and 2023. Okay. Like, they're, it's pretty wild that UConn has actually been able to win five championships in the last 25 years. Okay. Right? Well, Kinda, 2004, by the way. Yeah. I spreading mean, them around. It's wild. Yeah. And, I mean, does my son know UConn basketball? Probably not. But, like, there was a time when they had the number one men's team, the number one women's team. That's right. You know, a couple I mean, of times I think they had that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because I think it was Okafor than Tarazi, maybe at the same. Whatever, it might whatever have been. the case may have been. I know they've had so many good players, players go so in there. So many good players come through that program. Uh, nevertheless, though, yeah, I mean, is it regional with UConn? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know why yeah. UConn basketball isn't celebrated more than it probably should be. Um, maybe coaching has something to do with that in terms of you know interchanging coaches. Like, I think what made. You know, Indiana, Indiana for a long time was because, well, you had Bobby Knight there, you know, and he yeah. was just, he was that guy. Um, what made UCLA was, you know, obviously wooden. I think what makes Kentucky is Calipari, even though they've had a lot of success. So sometimes I think in basketball, especially, uh, the coach may have a lot to do with it. it it's, a, it's a good call. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that on a, off a soundbite a little bit later, but you would think UConn would have a little bit more of a transcendent nature across the country, given the fact that they won five national titles with five different groups and everything. And they're not great every year, by the way. This turns out that they're very good back-to-back years. Mm -hmm. But they really aren't. They do feel more of a regional team. They feel, at many times, they feel, you know, their women's program more than their men's program because it was so dominant Mm -hmm. over that 20-year run. Um, It still is very good, by the way, just not as dominant. We have more parity. So, yeah, UConn's kind of an interesting one. And... uh, the, the Big East might just be its own little animal sometimes. True. But True. it definitely does. Like, UConn does not register like the Kentuckys, like the Dukes, like even a Michigan State. Like, Michigan, I would feel like UConn should register more like a Michigan State does with well, Izzo. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like it does. Yeah, and even, even more than Michigan. They've had a lot more success in Michigan they State, have. I feel like. But, yeah, once again, I think it comes down to the coach and just um, the story, the philosophy there with Tom Izzo. Yeah, that's a pretty, uh, pretty wild one uh, there. And UConn, obviously, the favorite uh, to win it all. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we are live. Best Bet St. Augustine. Hey, what's going on in the football world? What is the latest with Shohei Otani? Do we have any new information there uh, what's going to happen with that situation it's all coming up here on the brenton austin show live from best bet st augustine and can't wait to check out hamby's bracket mm. he's been showing us this thing he's in good shape so far i think in our uh, little pool contest what did he do well did he lose anybody big looks like he lost kentucky okay. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we are a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnick Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnick family. We've purchased six different vehicles. 
from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimdick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom, meet the fantastic people, or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as better people, better projects, just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-701-7549. Better Exterior Solutions, experience better. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you in a Kia. And Michael Montiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability, three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. 
Hey, welcome back to Brent and Austin. You know, uh, have you had a pool hall? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we can only hear him there. Oh, He's gotcha. knocking okay. stuff over okay, inside. Sorry. He really likes this bump shot, too, by the way. I love it and too. he really liked that last commercial, it sounds like. Uh, I don't know what's going on back there with Ambie. Somebody check on Ambie. He, maybe he's just too locked into his bracket. Kids Brent Mar- no, and Austin Lane. I mean, golly. Well, hey, nobody's babysitting the kid's corner. That's what I'm saying. It's Friday. you got to put in the parking lot already. Holy cat. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. I don't even know if he's on the morning shift. I mean, maybe the, <laughs> maybe the, the constant sleep is hurting him. I mean, do we go to the kids' corner or do we have to downgrade him to the toddler's table? <laughs> toddler's table. <laughs> I like kids' corner. Okay. Um, definitely better. Okay. Hey, uh, Michigan Pro Day. There's a lot of talk about uh, J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. It's good. Th- I kind of feel this is a good year to, to not want a quarterback. I think there's a lot. Of, I know Caleb Williams is out there, and I guess, sure, if you're in Chicago, you feel pretty good about that. I know there's a lot of buzz about Drake May. I, I don't know if it's just me because we don't care about quarterback as much around here. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're not, you know, looking at that spot. Or if I just don't have a good feel for this class, which, by the way, the last time I had a good feel for a class was 2021. How's that working out? Exactly. Uh, but, what, I mean, J.J. McCarthy's pro day, I keep seeing people put him in the top five, top ten, think he could be a great steal. There's others like, this dude ain't even a first rounder. Like, he yeah. was surrounded by a ton of talent at Michigan. But what's your view on McCarthy? Man, you know, I think with McCarthy, it all depends of where he goes. Like, Minnesota supposedly super interested yeah. in that. And you could see him playing in like a Sean McVay-esque type of scheme. So I think if he goes to the right team, he can have a lot of success. I think he's got a great mindset. I think um, he takes the game seriously. You know, I mean, you know, the dude walks around barefoot on a football field like an hour before the game. Dude's got something going on for him. So I I do think, like, listen, I think he's worth a a first-round grade. I think he's worth a a first-round draft pick. But there are definitely some question marks, along with Jaden Daniels, your, your Heisman Trophy winner. Like, what, how is he going to pan out? Because he kind of came out of nowhere, burst on the scene, if you will. Can Caleb Williams live up to the hype? So there's definitely a lot of question marks, I feel like, with this group of quarterbacks in terms of their draft class. But at the same time, like you said, we're both on the same page. I thought Trevor Lawrence's year, you know, they're all going to be great. Yeah. And, and we see how that turned out. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I, I don't. I wonder how much of this is Michigan Tom Brady. <laughs> you know, a little yeah. bit of that. Like, does is there a little thought that you know? And they have produced some decent quarterbacks over the years, but obviously Brady sticks out, a guy that wasn't evaluated well. And and then McCarthy made some really good plays. Like, I mean, he wasn't just like a game manager. I mean, he could definitely play the quarterback position. I thought he was better for once you started to key in on Michigan a little bit more last year. You're like, this dude's. Better than everybody's saying. They think he's just not the guy and just not making mistakes and mm-hmm. and just handing the ball off, letting their defense do the thing. He's probably not running around and doing the stuff Jaden Daniels was doing. I, I get that for sure, but it doesn't mean you can't be a good quarterback in the NFL by doing what he did. So I, I just I don't know. That's a mystery right now on him. I, I think a lot of people. You're either yeah really good. Or you're like, no thanks. Yeah. It seems like right now on McCarthy, dangerous place to be on the quarterback because even if you're all in on the quarterback, it's still a 50-50 proposition most of the time. No, it definitely is. But once again, this is where it comes into saying, can this guy fit our system? Can this guy fit our scheme of what we like to run? And I think Minnesota makes a lot of sense for J.J. McCarthy. What's the what's the team that could um, – who's going to put their quarterback in the best position? That's looking for QB. Like, oh, is it Chicago? Bears. Is it yeah, Minnesota? It's, to, to me, it, it, to me, it's the Bears. Well, I mean Minnesota as well because you do have um, some pretty good weapons. But I think Chicago making the effort now in the run game with Keenan Allen, I would lean towards Chicago. Really, it's it's interesting. It's I get what you're saying from a personnel standpoint. They and they have still more things to play with, right? Mm-hmm. So they've made additions, but the. The issue I have with Chicago is I don't know if you trust them. And I don't love the fact that they brought Eberflus back and they're going to change this whole dynamic. I, I I don't really know if I understand that part. I would have reset it, so I don't like that. So in my mind, I'm not 100% sure that's going to be a best situation. Like I, I feel like what you just said about uh, Minnesota, could he go to a good spot in Minnesota? Could that be a, a decent landing place for McCarthy? Could he be set up pretty well with lower expectations too, right? right off the rip? Like, that yeah. might be one. Yeah, but who's Minnesota's running back right now? Did, they bring, in, did they bring in Aaron Jones? Oh, they, they know Aaron Jones. Yeah, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, so Aaron Jones. Okay, so yeah, I can help you in the pass game a little bit. Um, 
you know, can you retain Justin Jefferson? Is he going to want to stay there? That's going to be the question. I think Minnesota is a viable spot as well. Like New England, obviously, we know what's up, right? New England yeah. will take some time. I mean, Washington, New England are probably going to take quarterbacks in those situations. Washington, I mean, Washington actually has some players on the offensive side. They yeah. obviously are Underrated. resetting their stuff, too. Uh, new ownership, new everything. So, I mean, it's not an empty place to go as a quarterback. It actually could be somewhat entertaining yeah. uh, to be. Uh, they're not. I don't think anybody's going to be in like the, the Bryce Young, Carolina Panthers situation. No, no, no. I don't think so at all. I agree with that. Uh, I'm trying to see where else uh, they have quarterback going. Like right now, listen, this is Kuyper's draft. He's got Minnesota. Minnesota taking McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy. Yeah, it makes, I mean, they, they like him a lot. From and then here's say. another quarterback star of team, Denver. Bo Nix. They've got Bo Nix. He's got okay. Bo Nix in his uh, draft. But, like, Denver doesn't seem like to me this, uh, after the last couple of years, it's in a great spot. They look like they're resetting. Yeah. I, I think th- whoever they take, they'd be better off sitting for probably a year to, while they figure things out. The Raiders could take a quarterback as well. Is yeah. that a good situation to walk into? Good situation to let Gardner maybe do his thing yeah. and sit behind? This might be a smart plan on their part. Am I crazy or does Bo Nix kind of give you Russell Wilson vibes, though? Mm. Just like a style of play? Like so, good or bad? Oh no, I mean I'm saying good, good. Like I think like obviously a, a good arm, but also has the ability to run when they have to. Move. Yeah, I can yeah, see that. Like. And a lot of experience. Sure. Like Russell came in with a lot of experience in the in the college game, right? Yeah. He played a lot of football. Yeah. And I think Bo Nix obviously has played a ton well, of football. My, my only point that I'm trying to make here is like obviously Sean Payton wants his quarterback, right? He wants to start this whole oh, scratch. It's going to be a fire sale. Get rid of Jerry Judy, possibly Court and something like they're going to tear this thing down by the studs and start back up again. You got rid of Russell Wilson, and I feel like there's a lot of characteristics that Bo Nix possesses where it's like, all right, well you're going to replace a Russell Wilson with like what? You hope to be a Russell Wilson one day? Like, that's a little wild to me. Well, I think it, it, that's an interesting thought, but if you got Russell Wilson 12 years ago, I think you would feel differently about the Russell Wilson now. Okay. You know, especially with the breakup in Seattle, the is he as good? I mean, and Russell's now answering all the questions like, is he still any good? Sure. You know, instead yeah. of a guy that was on the – ascending player, the guy that um, you know wasn't married to a superstar, the guy that didn't have all this money. I'm not telling you that money changed him, but life got different for Russell Wilson than when he came into the league. So I, I think even Sean Payton and the Broncos would have taken eight years ago Russell Wilson. Yeah, but that's not to say like Russell Wilson's stats last year weren't that bad. You know, all things considered. I mean, let's bring him up real quick. 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions, over 300 yards passing, 98 quarterback rating. I think a lot of teams would take that. Yeah, no, I think a lot of teams would too. So, yeah, whether it's style or, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if uh, it fits in Denver. I don't know if Bone. I don't really think Bo Nix is going top 12. I think he's going to be a later jump back into the round and get him guy. I could be wrong. Um, let's see where the Jags, Kuiper, I think has, this is a, a latest one, and guess where he's going, cornerback. The Jaguars? Yeah. Oh. Cornerback or wide receiver, but I'm interested to see how many receivers go off the board early. And there's um, my folks from the 33rd team that I like. They have a receiver in play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll talk about that on the other side when we come back. We are live at Best Bet St. Augustine again. Come on down for lunch. We're going to get some wings and fries and stuff in front of us, I think, in a little bit for lunch. And when you get here at 12, you sit at a table, you could be a lucky seat winner here today at Best Pet St. Augustine from noon to midnight, every half hour, $100 lucky seat winner. That's all you got to do is get here and, uh, well, hang out with us, grab some lunch, play some games, watch some games. A lot to do at Best Pet St. Augustine. Brent and Austin show on the Action Sports Chats 24-7 Network. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, 
custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who is coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. I've been forecasting the weather for a long time, and no matter where I go, I always get asked the same question. Hey Mike, what's the weather going to be like? Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Mike, hey, what's the weather going to be like? I don't mind being asked, because I always have the answer. Great day for a perfect round of golf. Hey, a little rain later today. So go ahead, ask me. Hey Mike, I'm heading out. What's the weather like tonight? It's the same question, even at home. Mike Burrish, he's got your weather answer on Action News Jax. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Things are heating up, and the UNF baseball and softball teams are warmed up more than a third of the way through their seasons, and both Ospreys teams on the diamond are off to good starts. Recent Pitcher of the Week honors in both sports. Both teams have done well with the home cooking early in their schedule, and the early tests on the road have gone well, too. The A-Sun season is here now. UNF baseball and softball trying to make some noise in conference play. Go watch the Ospreys play. Go to UNFOspreys.com for more information on schedules and tickets. Plus, keep up with all the sports results and stories. UNFOspreys.com. When strong storms threaten and your safety is on the line, nothing beats accuracy. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish and the First Alert Weather Team. Your safest place to be during a storm is Action News Jax. I'm Action Sports Jax Stuart Weber. Please join me and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in Northeast Florida for our annual Take Steps Walk right here at Memorial Park on April 13th. The event is dedicated to finding cures and raising awareness for digestive diseases. Join us by registering now at actionnewsjacks.com. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Ah, Hammy must have been listening. He was listening to... Oh, man. It's just a, uh, see, I, I should have given you the picture. Of 92,000 last night on the Pac-Man machine, Miss yep. Pac-Man machine. Yep. So I was telling Austin about the story. I actually told these guys, I couldn't wait. I was like, I'm back, first of all. 
I, I flexed a little bit last night on the tech. Last kit. night it was eleven twenty three at night. Are you in REM sleep by then? I am in REM sleep by yeah, then. Sorry, yes. I just yeah, sorry. You're had good, to... man. Hey, phone's on silent. Silent, good. you're good. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're, we're silent. We are on like different clocks with this show, by the way. Like yeah. Brent Martineau, Austin Lane, Jason Hamby back in the studio, and Hamby works like morning shift. I don't know what the heck shift he's on. Sometimes one a.m. to nine. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that about you, Hamby. I don't know how you get used to it. I don't even know what your schedule is today. As long as you show up and hit most of the right buttons, I'm pretty happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I have getting up earlier now and earlier, and my day starts earlier with the 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. shift, but I still stay up pretty late because yes. um on at 11, 20-something at night. So, And you, you get up super early now to go do a workout. Yeah, usually like 5, 45, cool. 6. My goodness. Yeah. You're on like my mom's schedule. So That's I always early. try to get my, my eight hours in, you know. So, yeah, thankfully the phone's on sound. So what time do you go to bed? Uh, I try to get to bed by, by 10. Wow. Tough, tough right now with the games and everything, right? But the, the, the game's affected, but thankfully it was kind of a blowout with NC State. Yeah. This tech last you night. Are, so. uh, you are a well-disciplined machine, though. Gotta be. So, man. yeah, you have oh, yeah. to. As you I come here, they're offering me hot wings, and I'm like, uh, they're like, well, you can have one. I'm like, no, I can have 10 of them, really. I can have 25 of them. I know. Just, I'm, 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 kinda, after this. I'm trying to be disciplined, and there, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, pa- I'll, I'll, I'll pass on the discipline for the next uh, hour or so, and then I'll try to get back on it. Yeah. But anyway, so because of that, uh, last night, uh, in between shows, yep. I was like, you know what? I'm taking a, I'm going to play a game of Pac-Man mm-hmm. between the 10.55, get off at 11, go back at like 11.22, and I'm playing, and I, I'm just messing around these days because I haven't really been playing a lot. <laughs> well, all of a sudden... Just riffing. All of a sudden, it's like 11.19. Like, my game is going long, which means I'm at... I get to like 90,000 points, and I was telling Austin, I, I cleared... I get to the fourth level of screens, and when you get to that level, it actually like resets in terms of the ghosts and everything. You, you it's an easy screen to complete, mm-hmm. and so you can really catch up on the points. Mm-hmm. So, but I've got one life left, and I've got a show to do in like two minutes. We hit the commercial break. I essentially had to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm Pac Man. Yes, yes, and. To go do the sports cast. I was heavily debating whether just to not show up for it because I'm chasing 105,000 mm-hmm. high points. I didn't think that would go over well with the bosses, though, yeah. if I missed the sports cast because I was playing Pac Man. Try to explain that one away. Probably wouldn't be good. No, and I'm not going to rat anybody out, but I have seen people at, like, when I've come there before to get, like, maybe, like, a credential or something. <laughs> People will be in there playing with the lights off. Like I went in the office one time when nobody's supposed to be in there, and yeah, someone's playing Pac Man. So that's a it's a really popular machine. Almost like cell phones don't exist anymore, where you can play games on your cell phone. <laughs> I think people like the throwback though. Of no, I mean, it's fun. Like, listen, if I'm in there, uh, I'll probably average like one game uh, a pop, but I- I'm not addicted. You know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of what I get, I try to get the high score. Not going to get it, obviously. Don't put my 10,000 hours in there. <laughs> but I have no problem walking away from a Pac-Man machine. Oh, uh, man. I tell you, though, when you get to 92,000, you're on that screen. Like, you got a chance. Like, I told you, it's all about, I know this game so well. Oh, now it's like, it's got, apparently. it's uh, random. Whether they give you the fruit, they might give you a strawberry for 200 points, or they might give you a banana for 5,000 <laughs> points. If you get the banana for 5,000, you're on your way, man, yeah. to getting that 105. So, um, I'm back. Uh, that that 105 is going down. Yeah, sooner than later. That's really what the the moral of the story is here. I, I just can't wait till we get the NBA Slam, um, or I'm sorry, NBA Jam in uh, in there too as well. Well, we can get one. I mean, we could. are they super expensive? Ah, uh, go on Amazon right now. Talk, talk to our boy Jeff Bezos. See what we can what we're rocking <laughs> yeah, with there. They can drop it off via drone tomorrow. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> By the sure. time we get in studio uh, yep. in in a couple of weeks uh, or in a couple of days um, after the weekend, Brett Martin, no, Austin Lane, we're at Best Bet St. Augustine again. I keep reminding you, come on down. Uh, first of all, this is a terrific place. We're like, okay, maybe just hang out here all the time because, especially with the NCAA tournament, you can see the TVs behind us if you're watching. We assume you are, yep. and. Um, Obviously, the paramutual stuff that you can wager on, but also uh, all the games will be up just like they were yesterday. Uh, Lunch, uh, full bar, uh, obviously games to be played. When it goes to halftime or if there's a blowout, you go play some card games. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And and that's – or or the table games, excuse me. And 
It's a, it's a lot of fun to hang out here at uh, the new Best Bet St. Augustine. Come on down, visit with us. We'll be here again. We also already know we're going to be here on April 12th and 19th, so we have those days set up. Uh, and we're going to be out here a couple times a month uh, throughout the year. So uh, make sure you check it out, Best Bet St. Augustine. All right, before we went to break, I was talking about a couple of uh, mock drafts, and one of them was Mel Kuyper. And Kuyper had the Jags taken a cornerback, uh, and that is uh, Terry and Arnold out of Alabama, mm. which we've seen mocked to the Jags quite a bit. They can use corner. Like, it, it's hard not to say they don't need corner. Uh, but we are kind of wrapped up in the receiver conversation. So I wanted to see what Mel did with quarterbacks versus receivers in the early part of the draft because he has five quarterbacks going in the top 12. Well, where does that leave the receiver run? At number four, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. At number five, it's Neighbors to the Chargers. At number six, it's a Dunze. So they went three quarterbacks, three receivers, right off the rip. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise you? No, not not at all. I mean, I'm surprised. Well, I guess, yeah, the Giants do need a wide receiver, so the Giants are taking a Dunze, correct? Yeah, okay. they would get a Dunze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they seem to be in love with There's a lot of talk that they're in love with them. I, I think all these three of these guys, actually, I heard Neighbors they were the, the most in love with, but he sure. might go off the board first, according to Kuiper. There's a lot of smoke now that, that Neighbors might get shoved up on some uh, boards. No, I'm sorry. He does have Marvin Harrison still first. Uh, I think it was somebody else that put Neighbors above Harrison. That's a crazy run on receivers, man. I mean, he, you know, Julio Jones going up to get him or – Taking a receiver top 10 is not out of the question. I mean, heck, Jerry Judy and that draft class, I think, had several receivers Mm -hmm. right around the top 10 or top 12. They're important right now. They are. But with the depth of them, is it surprising to see teams investing so early in even maybe a star-wide receiver? No, because, you know, when you talk about those first four, maybe first three guys, I mean, you know, Brian Thomas Jr. up for interpretation – but especially you talk about neighbors or Dunze and then Marvin Harrison Jr., like they could all well be all pros. You know, so if that's the case at the wide receiver position, which is so coveted right now, it's a pass first league. No, I'm not surprised at all that teams are, you know, willing to trade up or teams are willing to take a, a wide receiver very high up here. Yeah, I, I just here's the other thing about it. Do you think receiver is a safe pick? Or do you think it's a risky pick? Quarterback is a risky pick, but you need to do it. Like the, I get the, the the run on quarterbacks. We all do. We get the overdrafting of quarterbacks. Very important. You got to find your guy. You got to take a risk here or there, a chance to go find your guy. And sometimes you're just left with whatever else is left. Receiver to this point is well, you can go pay for him in free agency. You can go get him in the second, third round, and still find receivers that really do well or later in the first round. You don't have to do it in the top 10 where you're trying to get something that's going to be good for you for years and years to come. That's why big men have always been taken a lot in the top 10 because it's a safer pick at defensive tackle or defensive end or even offensive line. Where do you characterize right now receiver as a risky pick in the first round, in the about? first round, especially I mean, early in the first round. Well, yeah, it can definitely be a risk. You know, ask about John Ross, ask about Darius Hayward Bay. Yeah. I mean, you know, but it's definitely a risk, but at the same time, it's the ultimate reward too. Because if you can get if you can get a Justin Jefferson, if you can get a Jamar Chase, that makes your offense so much more dynamic. Where I feel like it definitely is worth the risk. And you know, I think I mean. There's been many instances. What really opened my eyes, Brent, was the whole A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf yeah, um, yeah. draft. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like, all right, well, two guys from the same school. D.K. had horrible shuttle times. A.J., you know, I mean, like, how do you feel about him? Who do you take first? Well, now you see Brian Thomas Jr. and Malik Neighbors in the same instance where it's like, all right, you got two guys from the same school. They can both definitely get their shine because right now, D.K. Metcalf, and I get, has may you know have fallen off a little bit in terms of last year in terms of his productivity, but still considered a great wide receiver in his own right. And then obviously A.J. Brown doing his thing in Philadelphia as well. So let's finish off this a little bit. Uh, you finally get to an offensive tackle for Tennessee, Joe Walt out of Notre Dame. Uh, the Falcons take Dallas Turner uh, from Alabama. Chicago takes Jared Verse. At least a Mel Kuyper mock draft, by the way, uh, fl- from Florida State, uh, which would be no surprise to see Verse go in the top 10. Heck, he might have been top 10 if he came out last year, mm-hmm. uh, which is also interesting. He didn't really lose any of his draft stock at all. Uh, the Jets, uh, Bowers, <laughs> great situation Aaron for Rogers him. is happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then Minnesota, we mentioned already, and Bo Nix, uh, I'm sorry, J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix go to Minnesota-Denver, according to this. And then you get another offensive tackle to the Raiders. And then you get another offensive tackle to the Saints. And then you get a corner to the Colts. And then you get a guard to the Seahawks. And then you get a corner. 
wait a minute, the receiver run, where'd it go? Four, five, six, where's Brian Thomas? In this, he would go to the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 20. This would be a fascinating situation. I think there are two scenarios for the Jags that are going to be pretty wild to watch. I think many of us believe corner, wide receiver, probably pass rusher. I think pass rusher still is like a key position for the Jaguars to get. I don't think Verse is going to slip all the way down there. I, I don't think a guy like Turner is going to slip. Like I don't, just don't think those guys are going to slip. Okay. I think it's a fascinating situation if they did. Like if Jared Verse is still around at 17 or even around at 15, do you go up and get him or 14 or whatever it is? Yeah. Do you actually make the jump to go get him because he's slipping because of a run on receivers and run on quarterbacks, maybe a run on linemen too? But I think the more likely scenario is this one, where you have a couple of corners that you can go with. I mean, Nate Wiggins would still be available. DeGene out of Iowa is still available. I mean, they're all grouped up, and that's going to be beauty in the eye of the beholder, right, when it comes to the corner position. But in this situation, you still have Brian Thomas still on the board at 17. Mm -hmm. And where do the Jaguars go? Do they go wide receiver, corner? I think that's a pretty split deal right now for a lot of folks uh, that, that follow the Jags closely. For me, it's not. If if they it grade out the be. equally or about equal, I like Brian Thomas. Do you mind saying what Mel Kuyper said about this pick here that Jaguars took at number 17? At 17, he said Jaguars have been busy in free agency. Uh, he talks about everybody they add. Uh, I like the fit of Arnold and Jacksonville. He took a major step forward in 2023, developing into a shutdown corner. Picked off five passes, allowed only four receptions to 20-plus yards as the nearest defender in coverage. Wide receiver is another position the Jags could consider. I'm not sold on Davis as a replacement for Calvin Ridley, who signed a big deal with the Titans in free agency. Davis might be better as number three wide out with Christian Kirk. So, huh. again, he brings Brings it up. Yeah, but then doesn't address Brian Tom. Okay. Um, listen, would a cornerback help out this team immensely? Sure. Why not? Play somebody opposite side of Tyson Campbell? Sure. Why not? But at the end of the day, you know how I feel about this, Brent. I feel like a lot of fans feel about this, regardless of what the experts think. I think it's wide receiver or bust, especially if a guy like Brian Thomas falls to you. If not... Then we're talking about maybe Mitchell falling. Whatever the case may be, if the Jaguars don't select a, a first-round ride, ride receiver, and I feel like even if you don't like reach for one, maybe, possibly. You know what I'm saying? Like Maybe you got to risk it a little more where it's like, I'm not sure about this guy. If they don't do that, I think you're going to see a lot of backlash. Well, so let me... I don't know. I, don't, I think there are a lot of people that would like corner, honestly. Uh, I, I don't know if it's as much backlash as you're thinking, um, as it might be. Like, I'll probably give it backlash. I think you'd give it backlash. What I, the other side of this is, what if Thomas isn't there? Are you saying that they should go get the next one, whether it is Mitchell or somebody else? Because we do think there's a drop-off. Should they be aggressive, almost overdraft receiver, I mean, rather than go get maybe the pick of the litter at corner? I mean, if that's the case, then I would probably trade down or, you know, whatever, yeah. trade up. Well, have you want to clarify no, trade down. Yeah, trade yeah. down um, and then get a guy like a, a Donnie Mitchell. Yeah, um, you know, Worthy is obviously going to be a back end uh, like yeah. from uh, out of South Bottom Carolina theater. too. So I mean, there will be other guys. I just look at this as a group. I look at it as kind of like the three guys that are in this case going four, five, six in the top ten. Brian Thomas does he feel like he's in his own little world in the in the group of receivers? And then you've got the rest of them, the Mitchells, the Worthies, the everybody else as like a third group. Yeah, it's weird because some people love Brian Thomas. People have him falling. So, like, I feel like he's the guy. He's kind of the wild card. Yeah. I feel like when people don't really know where to put him. Yeah. And, and again, some people are really high on Mitchell. Yeah. So, like, where I was going with this 33rd team had the Jags trading up to number eight to get a Dunze. Sure. Man, I love it. I just yeah, love the not? aggressiveness to go get one of the top flight guys. Yeah. If that's what – no, I don't know what well, the heck's that going to cost you. Well, I was going to ask, you know what they traded to get him? I, I didn't see it. Okay. Um, and, you know, I will say this, and I really don't – I'm not giving away everything. I know there's a balance here, right? I know you got to do whatever's good for the business side of it. Yeah. But I got a feeling, going back to yesterday's conversation, 
It's not worrying about what we're going to pick in 2025 and 26 and how many picks we're going to have as much as go get the guy, go get our guy, go get the guy for Trevor, go get the guy for the offense. And I think there's going to be a little bit more of an attitude like that, which I like because I'm a little tired of the saving the draft pick to try to get the next guy down the road type of thing. Let's go get the guy right now, especially with a team that's put together the way the Jaguars are, and there aren't a lot of holes. Instead, you're already adding to a room that you think is pretty good. If you had a chance to get neighbor. Marvin Harrison Jr. or Dunze. I mean, just pick your poison. Whatever trouble one you want. How much draft capital would you give up to move up to get one of you, those guys? Whoever, whoever you think is going to be the best one. Uh, I mean, I'm so bad at this game, but uh, I mean, what, I'd have to go back and look at. Uh, we'll do that in a break. I'll, I'll get okay. the. I'll go back just so I'm not throwing stuff out there. I'll go back and look at a team that's traded up from the middle of the first round, like last year, to maybe go up in, to number eight or well, seven or something like that. What do the Falcons give up to get Julio Jones again? Yeah, I'll go okay, visit we'll, that we'll one. But that, that one's we'll so long ago now, I'm not even sure if it's apples to apples to right now. They gave sure. up a ton to go get Julio Jones. I don't know if the card is the same. Like, the point value is the same as it was maybe a decade ago in that respect. Um, but the bottom line is, I'd be certainly entertaining it and I don't mind giving stuff up to go get it. Um, and I think the Jags are going to have to decide. Now, they do have needs at corner. They do have needs at wide receiver. If you can get your best player on the board, that's how this is going to come down to. Remember last year, uh, Trent Bulky said, we basically have three players that we really covet in the first round. I think is that that's how, kind of how it came out. Okay. Well, yeah. you can tell Anton Harrison was one of them. The other two, I kind of forget where they were at, mm -hmm. but they were off the board, obviously. He knew he could still get Anton Harrison, so then he played that card that way. At 17, i got to believe, compared to 24 where they were last year to start the first round, 17, you probably like more players yeah. in that spot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, And, and that will all depend. We have the draft lunch and everything, what they say. Do they feel like it's a... You'll get the reports that say there are really only 21st rounders in this draft. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though there are 32 drafts, teams drafting, there are only 20 first-rounders. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do the Jags feel about that? Do they feel like there's a lot of them, or do they feel like this is more back-end kind of talent in the first round, more toward the second round? That's where your trading down or trading up could really come into play. We know this. There's definitely some top-flight talent in this draft. Mm -hmm. How many of them? Uh, I think is just all about their board, and that's one thing we just can't predict. Doesn't matter what we think. No matter what you think, it matters really what they think and how they line up their board. And one other thing, if they are correct. We're live, Best Bet St. Augustine, halfway through here on a Friday and heading into the weekend in style. A little rainy one in Jacksonville to start. But you know what? Isn't that perfect? I think YB400 said earlier, hey, get the wings. <laughs> get uh, the rain. We're all safe. said, got paycheck today. Let's go, man. <laughs> Let's go. What right. a day on a Friday. And now you got round two of the NCAA tournament. You can watch it right here. Best bet St. Augustine as well. And you can watch it with us. Oh, there it is. There's my picture. See, there's proof. There it is. They yeah, haven't took a picture. 92,080. I'm chasing that 105. That's mine, too. Oh, come get me if you want, Miss Pac-Man. What, what I don't fuck? think you can. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. This March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community, giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and many, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. 
Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. Go where all the pros go. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute takes care of athletes at the highest level, like the Jacksonville Jaguars players. They will take care of you, too. Our team covers a lot of teams here in Jacksonville. FSCJ, JU, the Axemen, the Jumbo Shrimp, the Sharks, and, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars. JOI covers all those teams as well. And then there's youth sports. My kids play baseball and softball. And whenever we have an injury question, the first call is to JOI. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute has been serving Jacksonville for 30 years and they have over 30 specially trained physicians and assistants at five locations in the area. If your injury is specific to an area of the body, JOI has a specialist. They also are leaders in robotic surgery, joint replacement, and sports medicine. JOI Rehab has 13 locations and 90 therapists to get you better. Comprehensive care with caring physicians and staff at JOI. From youth sports to high school, college, and the pros, Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute, JOI. Go where all the pros go. Get outside. Yeah. <laughs> Make friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Learn life lessons with the first team. Golf is kind of like life in a way. You can take some stuff you learn on the course and take that and use it in every single day life. Donate to First Tee's Play Day campaign and everybody wins. For every $10 you've donated, you're entered to win a free round with a buddy. At the stadium course, home of the players, with this guy, Len Matisse. Scan the code on your screen or visit actionnewsjacks.com to learn more. I'm Action News Jack's First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jack's This Morning team helping you start your morning right. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Well, there they are, the Jaguars' newest additions, minus a couple of guys like Joey Sly and uh, Travis Gibson, who has been added as a pass rusher. I think that might be a sneaky good play I keep coming back to. I know we didn't talk about a lot, the Gibson one, but it does add some depth. And a guy that's got a decent resume with 11 sacks, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit intrigued. I'm not counting on a lot, but that's what you do with depth. You're not really counting on a lot, but he's a guy that's done it before. Are we disrespecting Joey Sly a lot by not putting him on this thing? Because we need a kicker to actually do good here, Brent. Well, that's true. Uh, but we're probably waiting to see if Cooker, Kicker does good. And also, okay. Action Sports Jack Stewart Weber, who made that very nice, fancy graphic, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is on a honeymoon in some uh, part, like in Australia or something. I can't even follow him. Australia no. now, huh? I think I followed him from Dubai to, I, I might have seen this morning that he made it to Melbourne. Okay. And then we established, is he flying or is this a cruise or like a... a oh, no, he's flying. The oil rig. Okay. No, he's flying. Again, okay. I think if he were to... He'll probably do this and he can send it to us at some point. But if you were... Like, he's literally... Circumnavigating? What a word! That is a good word. Yes. I was going to go, like, traversing. Oh, come on, man. Circumnavigating. Uh, the globe. Yeah. I think he's flying around... 
No, say, say it correctly. He's circumnavigating the globe. Circumnavigating Brent. the globe. There it is. Brent, do you have him on Even Life 360? <laughs> I don't want Weber on Life 360. I, I actually... That's funny you said. I actually just got a notification on Life 360. Who's leaving? Oh, Kaylee completed the drive. Okay. Um, I honestly don't check this that much, but I do get the notifications on the kids. Yeah. Like, Steph, of course, is all over it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, I don't have Stuart so, on the, the Life 360. That's actually a good call, though. That would have been pretty wild if I did. So, what, Life 360 is basically like a phone app that follows your kids and everything? Yeah, your kid's not old enough yet. But, okay. yes. Yeah, basically... Yeah. Um, and you don't have to just have to just be a kid thing. Like, I th- I feel like the kids have had friend groups that they follow each other sometimes on on Life Three Sixty. Yeah, you do it that way, Hamby, at all, or what? You use it? No, 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 I've I've never used it, but I've had friends that their parents did when I was oh in, like, kids know, corner school, growing up a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, it's I think it's got a lot of good. There's good reason behind it. Yeah, there's also like. Well, can you just you can know too much, like right? And and, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) like that's why I just get the notification. I don't really peek in. I know Steph is probably looking. Like you can tell how fast the kids are driving. Oh, really? On the app? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely getting this one rolling. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, dude, saw you're going on 95 miles per hour down 295. Want to talk about that? Yeah. I yeah, that's been a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know how I fully feel about it. Obviously, the good side, the upside, is there. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, eh, but it's like, no, the kids can't get away with anything, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the kids. Now, my, my guess is they do get away with stuff, right? Probably yeah. more than you think we think. But the bottom line is, like, if you want to track this stuff, if you want to track the kids, it's easy to do it. And you can, like, it. Okay, but think so, about this when you were growing up, man. If your mom was watching everywhere you could be, you are, what? right? No, man, we're good in the middle of central Wisconsin. <laughs> no, hopefully the cell service was out. Just, just be home before the, the, the sun goes down. Be home before the street lights come on. We're good. Cell phone service? No, man. It's it's what we call trust, Brent. We have any cell phones. Okay. Okay. It's what we call trust. It's what we call trust back then. Uh, heavy he calls trust from the guy that went on a visit and had an underage. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> And, and maybe that trust was violated a little bit at that moment, but before, moment. but up until that time, trust was never the violated. Trust was right there. Yeah, there were a few instances where, you know, might have got home a little later than um, I had to. Might have got home at 3 o'clock in the morning one night from homecoming. You know, we're, we're toilet papering houses and things and running from the cops. <laughs> Mom, I don't want to, hey, where are you at? <laughs> you know, it's the, 3 o'clock in the, the morning. The full rundown of uh, probably everybody's uh, childhood, but yours yeah. uh, specifically might be pretty good yeah, at, at some point. It, it could be a movie. I still think we're going, we're, one day we're going to do, we said this on the radio side and we never did it. We're going to go back and like do shows from our hometowns. Yeah. And we yeah, never really yeah. did it, but I think we're going to craft that up at some point. I don't know if this year is probably not the year, no, for uh, sure. but at some point we're going to do that. Uh, we almost, you know, I think we were thinking of doing it when uh, the Jags were supposed to play Green Bay and then the of pandemic course. hit. Yeah. Right. right? Because we're going to go it. hang out up there for a couple extra days yep. and go to the Green Bay game. Yep. Uh, one of two places, by the way, I haven't been yet. Lambeau yeah, and now the new it. Las Vegas uh, Allegiant Stadium. So in the NFL. So we are going to do that at uh, at some point. All right. We were talking. You asked, like, okay, how much did it cost the Atlanta Falcons to get Julio Jones to trade up? And, well, here it is. Um, the Falcons uh, got Jones with a sixth overall pick, acquired for the Browns, five draft picks. Mm. Atlanta was picking number 27 overall that year, so they gave that up. The team's first-round pick in 2012 as well, and also the second and fourth-round picks – in 2011, and a fourth rounder in 12. So they gave so, up their first and second, a fourth, and then their first and fourth. Whew. So two first now, round picks. Now, to be honest, they went from 27 to like six. Yeah. Jazz are trying to go 17 to maybe like eight sure. or something in this scenario. Yep. So they got to go halfway up the mountain, right? Yep. Which changes the draft capital that you would give up. But that's – would you do that deal? Would I do – I would do that for uh, Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't do that for one of these three guys. Man, so what, two first-rounders? Basically two first-rounders, two fourth-rounders in a second. Yeah, we're all set. No. 
But again, it, it wouldn't cost you that much. How much just simply would you give up a first round? Well, you're gonna, it can't be just simple. You're going to give up a first rounder. You're going to give up 17 and you, next year's first rounder and then whatever else, maybe another pick. So two first rounders again? Once again, if I'm giving up two first rounders, I'm having the conversation with Justin Jefferson. Yeah, like I mean, that, you have that $30 million and, and that, conversation, well, too. Well, that's fine. At least I, I know exactly what I'm getting with Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Probably the best wide receiver in the league right now. I'll pay him his money. And now Josh Allen, you know, Trevor Lawrence, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. I don't know. Man. I would probably sacrifice if I knew I was getting Marvin Jones Jr. a first this year and a first second year. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, I well, probably would. Because here's the deal. I, I think uh, I feel like we've had a little bit of this conversation before. I would probably, too, because I'm thinking that we're going to be in the playoffs in Jacksonville, which means it's going to be at the very worst, like the 20, uh, like around the 20th pick or 22nd pick. And by the way, it's still a very good pick. Mm -hmm. But you're hoping it's a 24, 26, 28. They make a deep run, right? If you're going to get a guy like this. And now you have your guy for years to come. Uh, on the cheap for the next handful of years, too, which is a very – I mean, you could get in this situation, if you were to do that, let's just say you somehow find a way and you give up capital. I know you'd say, hey, you got to go get Justin Jefferson for that. Well, not really. If you go get Marvin Harrison, you give up similar capital. You're now paying him over four years what you'd basically pay Justin Jefferson yeah, over a year. But I also feel like wide receiver is like the biggest position where they never want to honor their contracts. They always want to get paid sooner. Uh, that is corner and... and yeah, corner uh, too. Yeah. I think wide receivers even more. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I can't seem to find... I don't know why I can't. I don't know if it's way down this list. Um, if there were some trades last year to move up. You know, a lot more commonplace, too, is a lot of player-involved trades. Well, I mean, you, see, you wouldn't yeah. see players move much, but Cam Robinson. We saw A.J. Brown last year. And A.J. Brown. Uh, that Was that two years ago now? Oh, was that two, two years, years ago? ago? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Two years. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I got an example of it. Um, this is the Bears one. Okay. Okay, so they traded all the way up to number one, and the Bears got everything. They got a player. They got a round one pick. They got a round two pick. They got round one and round two for this year. That's why they're in the situation so Carol for the Bryce for the number one overall pick. So Carolina gave up two first rounders and two second rounders for Bryce Young, yeah. To move up from nine to one. Okay. And go get the quarterback, obviously. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that seems crazy in hindsight. <laughs> well, and in hindsight, yeah, once again, let's see what Bryce Young looks like once he has, you know, a, a team around him. I mean, the Jags are really the team that moved the most, I think, last year's draft. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see, the Jets and Packers on the Aaron Rodgers deal. Yes. They maneuvered some picks. So they, like, swapped 13 and 15. And then they threw, like, the Packers also got a round two and a round six pick. There was a lot of money on the table in that deal, too. So I don't necessarily know if it will cost you next year's round one. All right, here's a good one. The Texans, they traded up from number 12 to 3. Okay, I like this. Okay. So they played, this, this is the one. This is the one to kind of at least model after. And it looks like you're going to have to give up two first rounders. Uh, they gave up uh, the number 12 pick and the number 33 pick Okay. in round two. two so yeah. almost another first rounder. Yeah. They gave up a first rounder this coming year in 24. Mm-hmm. They gave up a third rounder in 24. Mm -hmm. And they get Will Anderson at number three. They moved from 12 to three, which is nine spots. Let's just say the Jags moved from 17 to eight. Now, I still don't know if it covers this because the top three pick is valued probably way more than even the number eight pick. Sure. But, it's but that gives you a little bit of an indication. You're trying to slide up from nine spots. It's going to cost you two first rounders, probably a second and another Ooh. pick. Now, if you're yeah. a team like Arizona, just let's just say you wanted to move all the way up to number four and get Marvin Harrison for the Jags. And you don't care about, you're going to give up, uh, shoot, man, I think you're giving up in this instance. You're giving up maybe your first and second round pick this year and a first round pick next year and maybe like a fourth next year or something yeah, yeah. or a third. So the Jags are willing to do it, whether you believe it or not or agree with it or not. 
But for a team like Arizona, wouldn't that make a lot of sense? They've got a lot of holes to fill. Yeah, it definitely would. Well, and listen, with Houston, too, keep in mind here, like at, at the time of this trade, I didn't think Houston's roster was anything to really like, oh, wow, they're legit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't taking Houston seriously. They obviously knew something that we didn't, okay? Maybe they're one pass rusher away, let's just say. You gave up two first-round picks, you know, a second-round pick, whatever the case may be. Give up a lot, a lot of capital for Will Anderson. Do you think what we know right now about this Jaguars organization, are you that big wide receiver away from making a run? Do you give up two first-rounders, maybe a second-rounder as well, to say, hey, Odunze, hey, neighbors, or somehow maybe, hey, Marvin Harrison Jr., we're maybe one player away from making this thing special. Let's get our guy. Yeah, I, I think you can make the case of it. I, I I don't like the phrasing of that because I don't believe you're ever one player away. Well, the Falcons were. Well, they didn't necessarily go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but it only helped them out, though. It I mean, did help them yeah, out. Now, yeah. now, listen, do I think that's a different story? Sure. Do I think it can help them out for the next five, six, seven, eight, ten years? Yeah, absolutely. I do, I do think if you're taking Marvin Harrison or one of these guys, it might become mm-hmm. the Julio Jones for the next decade. Totally agree. Does it make you a Super Bowl winner? Does it make you the AFC champ, right? I don't know about that. It definitely makes you better. I don't know if it's your one player away in that regard, but it helps your quarterback out. Let's just go back real quick. To, to, I feel like we've done this a little bit, mm-hmm. but 2011, um, Matt Ryan's 26 years old, so he's a couple years older than Trevor. They have Michael Turner at running back, uh, and that's about it. They go get Julio Jones. They already had Roddy White and Tony Gonzalez. All right? So um, outside of that, they've got, you know, whatever on the offensive line. They're – Got a couple old guys, or a young guy who's just uh, two years in, and then, you know, some, you know, five-year vets or something like that. Yeah. Defensively, they have uh, Babino and Edwards and Corey Peters and John Abraham, Sean Weatherspoon, Curtis Lofton, Stephen Nicholas, uh, Brent Grimes, Dunter Robinson, William Moore, and Thomas DeCout. DeCoud? DeCout? Okay. Well, here's the thing. What was the record that year? So in um, – 2011, they end up 10 and 6 under Mike Smith. Okay. The year prior, they were 13 and 3 under Mike Smith. Okay. So they actually went backwards. But, but in 2012, they go 13 and 3. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So they, they definitely got better. I mean, let's just go. It falls apart for Mike Smith after that. I don't know if they got banged up or whatever, 4-12, and 12, well, and then they start making changes. So, but Julio Jones is good. I mean, and Julio Jones continues to be good for all that time. It was worth it for them to move up and get Julio Jones. It just didn't result in a Super Bowl trophy. No, but the, they didn't have a lot of success. You know, I mean, listen, the difference between a Super Bowl and can be considered some kind of luck. Sometimes you have to have the, the most elite quarterback to be able to accomplish that. My point, though, is that Atlanta – was pretty dang good before Julio Jones even got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, thought, they, thought, they were like one player away. You get Julio Jones. I mean, say what you want. Didn't win a Super Bowl, but they still had success with Julio Jones as well. I think the same thing. And necessarily it's not the same scenario, but Houston maybe thinking, hey, we're one edge rusher away. Let's go ahead and get our guy. They got their guy. They're a pretty dang good team now. My question is, is if Jacksonville goes to get their wide receiver, are you confident right now that they have the roster in place to be successful. Are they one wide receiver away from making a run? Yeah, I could make the case a dynamic wide receiver away from being very dangerous. Okay. You know, um, I, I don't think if you get Marvin Harris, I can't sit here and tell you that they're going to be the AFC champ. I, I just don't. I do think they become the favorite if they were to get Marvin Harrison in the AFC South. And I think they would buy their roster to me bypasses and what Trevor has bypasses Houston and what they have. So I think if you're just doing that alone, right now you're penciling yourself hopefully into the postseason everywhere else. And there's there's domino effects here. What does it say to Trevor, who you're trying to keep, right? And you're trying to have him be have his best year yet and put him in a great situation. And now you've got these guys, 25-year-old Gabe Davis, 27-year-old Christian Kirk, and now this young receiver to Marvin Harrison, to Dunze, one of those players that are growing with your quarterback who you're about to extend. And then you get him on the cheaper version of the contract, too. You add that part into it where you are paying the other guys a bit, but you're not paying that young guy at least for the next three or four years. So there's a lot of dominoes here that seem to make a lot of sense in it. 
um, that, yeah, I don't care necessarily about those draft picks. I think it makes you better. The one thing that you would say here now, we know how good Julio was. From 2010, when they didn't have him, to 2011 when they got him, they averaged the same amount of points the same that year. Sure. Now, the next year, let me just do one more, they went up to... 26.2 a game. So they really were right about the same. 414 points, 402 points, 419 points. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's not like that worked out bad for them. They they got a lot out of Julio Jones and that pick. They just really never materialized. It didn't take them from a 25-point-a-game offense to a 30-point game in offense. Sure, but they went to the Super Bowl eventually. With they Julio, did eventually right? go, and Julio yeah. went. Yeah, and yeah, they should have yeah. won it. They should have won it. Yeah, and then yeah. that came years later, of course. Of course. But uh, nonetheless. But they ended up getting there so because I think, of it. I think this needs you know, to be seriously considered. If you're a Jaguars fan and you're saying, hey, we want to trade up for Odunze, we want to trade up for neighbors, whatever the case may be, that's fine. But then ask yourself this question. The teams that do this, the teams that trade up, are the teams that already have the roster in place, that have the culture in place to be like, all right, we're already successful. We're just one player away. And do I think the Jaguars are one wide receiver away from making the playoffs? I don't have the answer for that. I think you can make a case for either side. I'm just saying, if you do make that trade, make sure you're only one player away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Harry, we're taking a break here at uh, Best Bet St. Augustine. We come back, we'll talk about all the different things going on uh, with Best Bet uh, up in Jacksonville right here in St. Augustine as well. And I'll continue to remind you, coming up in 15 minutes, lucky seat winner, $100 if you're at a table. They'll just tap you on the back, and uh, you might be a lucky seat winner. Every 30 minutes they're doing that, giving away $100 all the way until midnight tonight. So uh, you do the math on that. What's that? 24 winners throughout the day here on a Friday. They did this same yesterday uh so come on down get some free money and uh, get some lunch as well and hang with us we'll be here until one o'clock best bet st augustine it's the brenton austin show here on a friday round two of the ncaa tournament we will take a look at austin's bracket how's he looking after round number one In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown, in your hometown, Bold City, heating and air. I've been forecasting the weather for a long time, and no matter where I go, I always get asked the same question. Hey Mike, what's the weather gonna be like? Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Mike, hey, what's the weather gonna be like? I don't mind being asked, because I always have the answer. Great day for a perfect round of golf. Hey, a little rain later today. So go ahead, ask me. Hey Mike, I'm heading out. What's the weather like tonight? It's the same question, even at home. Mike Burrish, he's got your weather answer on Action News Jax. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year-round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton, 
easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Things are heating up, and the UNF baseball and softball teams are warmed up more than a third of the way through their seasons, and both Ospreys teams on the diamond are off to good starts. Recent Pitcher of the Week honors in both sports. Both teams have done well with the home cooking early in their schedule, and the early tests on the road have gone well, too. The A-Sun season is here now. UNF baseball and softball trying to make some noise in conference play. Go watch the Ospreys play. Go to UNFOspreys.com for more information on schedules and tickets. Plus, keep up with all the sports results and stories. UNFOspreys.com. When strong storms threaten and your safety is on the line, nothing beats accuracy. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish and the First to Learn Weather Team. Your safest place to be during a storm is Action News Jax. I'm Action Sports Jax Stuart Weber. Please join me and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in Northeast Florida for our annual Take Steps Walk right here at Memorial Park on April 13th. The event is dedicated to finding cures and raising awareness for digestive diseases. Join us by registering now at actionnewsjacks.com. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Oh, there's my bracket. How does it look? Where did I have Kentucky? You know, I almost picked Florida over Kentucky and I didn't, and I should have. That's if Florida wins today and then beats Marquette, right? Uh, but Kentucky out. Everything else looking okay. I need Iowa State to keep winning here early. We'll talk more about the brackets, uh, how Hamby's doing, Austin's doing, I'm doing. And remember, we've got one who could be the people's champ. We're going to give them, uh, well, probably some best bet bucks. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what I'm calling it. We have and it'll come out of my pocket. Uh, Brett Martin, along with Austin Lane. This is not Austin Lane, although, I mean, you're working on the Austin Lane part. Yeah. Yeah, they got the beard going a little bit. Uh, this is Mike Barry uh, from Best Bet St. Augustine. He runs the show down here, and uh, what a show it is. This is a, a great room. We had Jesse on yesterday talking about it, uh, and I know you guys are just underway about a year now uh, or so, right? Here. Uh, here at Best Bet St. Augustine, and we're seeing uh, the table start to fill up here on a Friday afternoon, getting ready to watch the NCAA tournament. Uh, big weekend, probably a racing up on the, the paramutual TVs, and then a big weekend of playing, too, huh? Oh, yeah. So we have uh, fun promotions, you know, good spot to come, you know, no better place to come watch all your bets here. And while you're here, sitting at the tables, all you got to do is be playing and hundred dollars every half hour. So yeah, that's a cool one uh, that we've been uh, pushing and promoting. If you come down here between well noon uh, and about ten minutes, uh, I think people might go word on that because starting the doors starting to open quite a bit more as we get closer to this lunchtime hour and uh, all the way until midnight tonight. Every half hour, every half hour. Uh, just to, how did that go yesterday? You guys did the same thing. So yeah, had good. some uh, fun winners. We started firing in here about five o'clock. Filled up. And every half hour, we just pick a random seat. People love it. That's good stuff. And you can, uh, obviously, we've got some wings and fries hanging over there now. So lunch hour uh, is upon us. It's not just here. You guys also have a big event going on. Best Bet Jacksonville um, yesterday kicked that off. Uh, main event coming up on Sunday. So tell us a little bit more about that. So it's uh, day 1B will be today. It's a $1,200 buy-in, 300000 guaranteed should be a big turnout today and even bigger tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I mean, give us a sense from um, a $300,000 payout, $1,200 buy-in. Yeah. What kind of crowd will you get 
today for that event? How how I would imagine a couple hundred today and a, even more tomorrow. Really? So yeah. So that's uh, and and how many will play on Sunday? Depends. It's usually about twelve and a half percent, ten percent. Okay. So how many? We so get. it's a percentage of yeah. of what you bring in there. So uh, that's an intriguing one then. Yeah. We have some fun ones. There's a satellite tonight, an interesting satellite. I don't know if you've played them before, but this one's called a milestone. So it's not like a normal tournament. You just have to get a certain amount of chips. So if you start with 20,000, as soon as you get 130,000, you're done. You get your ticket and you're in. We were talking to Jesse yesterday about this. This is my favorite part of coming here is that you, you can – be really into the poker part of it, what's going on uh, this weekend, what yeah. you just mentioned, um, or the table games where it's very novice level uh, if it needs to be, or, and, and just have fun and play for hours and, and hang out. Uh, very little stress, oh, yeah. I would say. No stress. Um, and, but then you have a bunch of different games and tournaments yeah. to fit a, probably a lot of folks whatever they're looking for, right? I mean, again, novice experience, yeah. but also just kind of different ways to play the game and, and yeah. create a tournament. Yeah. So here we run a little smaller tournaments, but still pretty big. We get, we've had a thousand people in a tournament here and it's cheap enough that if you're not very familiar with it, you can get right in $60 all the way up to three, $400. And then over the table games is for everybody. Let's just come have fun. Play war. All you got to do is flip your card over and win some money. Simple as uh, that. So come on, Best Bet St. Augustine. Best Bet Jacksonville, again, has uh, their main event coming up on Sunday with 300000 But the play-in days are yesterday it was one, another one today, and tomorrow $1,200 buy-in. And down here at St. Augustine, uh, we've got some big events coming up in April, too, because we'll be back down here April 12th and 19th. You're a big sports guy. I saw you out at the Players' Championship. Oh, yeah. I know you've been paying attention to this NCAA tournament and everything else. Uh, what do you like so far in the tournament? I've done pretty well. I, only, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I missed uh, I missed BYU, but I only had them win in one game. Yeah, anyway. yeah. And then Kentucky, but it, that was so fun to watch. I didn't mind losing that one. That's part of it. So who do you got? Do you remember who you have in your final four? I have uh, Creighton, Carolina, Arizona, I think. And I forget who I have coming out of the other one. Maybe Marquette. Okay. Yeah. Who do you got winning it? Carolina. All right. Wow, that's now that's different. Everybody's going to UConn. Everybody's going to Houston. I like their guards, yeah. and and it's a guard tournament, yeah. right? I mean, I think that's a problem with Purdue. People staying away from Purdue because yeah. they lost last year, but also because the guard play isn't like yeah. some of these other teams: Arizona, North Carolina. I think North Carolina, by the way, is fascinating. They go to the championship game. They don't even make the tournament, yeah. and then they come back. Like we were talking about blue bloods earlier, and do the kids know like how good North Carolina has been over the years? Well, you don't have to go that far back. I mean, they were in the yeah. national championship game two years ago, and here they are at number one seed. That is a wild run. I'm not even sure if that's ever happened to go championship game, miss the tournament, tops yeah, right one yeah. number one seed in the NCAA tournament. But that's uh, not that I can remember. Yeah, that's what North Carolina uh, is doing. How busy will it be uh, on, on a weekend? As we head into to this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, it's a big place. Yeah. So you got plenty of room to kind of stretch your legs, have fun, and, and not feel overwhelmed, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, usually Fridays get pretty busy in here around dinner time. It'll be fun. Everyone's having a good time. Poker is our busiest night on Friday night, so there'll be any game you want. You guys have done a great job here too with the atmosphere. You got music playing. Oh yeah, right. There's a and, and each corner of the room feels a little different. We even shifted a little bit today with our set. And you got this in the background oh, yeah. versus um, you know the the table games in the background. And if you go in that far corner of the room, it's it's a little bit different than this far yeah. corner. I mean, we can play game sound. We haven't. You can't do that at any other room. So if there's a big game on, we'll flip the sound on and. You could listen in while you're playing. Good stuff. Uh, I was looking at these doors. We can actually close this off. Maybe we get a studio audience in here. Close this thing off if you need to, yeah. or keep it open for one big party, which we might be planning on yeah. uh, down the road here at Best Bets St. Augustine. Mike Berry, thanks for hanging out with us, man. Thanks for having us, too. Yeah, and uh, good luck the rest of the NCAA tournament. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, Brent and Austin show here live from Best Bet St. Augustine. Then when we come back, how do the brackets look? How does day two of the NCAA tournament look? We'll take a sneak peek including the florida gators who play at 4 30 today against colorado they've been very good in this opening round how good are they can they go on a run especially now that kentucky's knocked out it looks like marquette would be the team to beat if they can win some games we will be back 
on the Brenton Austin Show. There's the people's champ, according to, well, he's representing the people. Zach Fortner, he's got Tennessee to win it all. Did they look good or what last night? So that's a good sign for the Vols and Rick Barnes, and that's a different winner now. If Tennessee wins it all, Fortner's getting my money. We'll be back here from Best Bet St. Augustine. Alive Credit Union cares about our community. After all, it was founded by people in our community 70 years ago by a group of Florida Blue employees. And the mission still is to inspire financial wellness and give you a financially fit lifestyle. In here, they are more than just a bank. You can find Alive in the community providing financial education to our youth, sharing programs that are geared toward building credit and rebuilding credit, and supporting causes with amazing organizations like the American Lung Association. This March, Alive Credit Union will be back for the sixth time as a longtime sponsor of the American Lung Association's Fight for Air Climb. The event is March 23rd downtown. Get your team of climbers, family, friends, co-workers. The event will be emceed by Action News Jax's Garrett Biedenbaugh. Be a part of our community and become a member of Alive Credit Union today. Find out the many ways you can be inspired in financial wellness at alivecu.coop. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community, giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and many, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. Go where all the pros go. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute takes care of athletes at the highest level, like the Jacksonville Jaguars players. They will take care of you, too. Our team covers a lot of teams here in Jacksonville. FSCJ, JU, the Axemen, the Jumbo Shrimp, the Sharks, and, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars. JOI covers all those teams as well. And then there's youth sports. My kids play baseball and softball. And whenever we have an injury question, the first call is to JOI. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute has been serving Jacksonville for 30 years and they have over 30 specially trained physicians and assistants at five locations in the area. If your injury is specific to an area of the body, JOI has a specialist. They also are leaders in robotic surgery, joint replacement, and sports medicine. JOI Rehab has 13 locations and 90 therapists to get you better. Comprehensive care with caring physicians and staff at JOI. From youth sports to high school, college, and the pros, Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute, JOI. Go where all the pros go. Get outside. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Make friends. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Learn life lessons with the first team. Golf is kind of like life in a way. You can take some stuff you learn on the course and take that and use it in every single day life. Donate to First Tee's Play Day campaign and everybody wins. For every $10 you've donated, you're entered to win a free round with a buddy. At the stadium course, home of the players, with this guy, Len Matisse. Scan the code on your screen or visit actionnewsjacks.com to learn more. I'm Action News Jack's First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jack's This Morning team helping you start your morning right. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find 
find out and recommend the appropriate Connecticut water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Connecticut dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. My family and the Nimbic family, we purchased six different vehicles from Nimbic Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimbic Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimbic Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimbicBuickGMC.com. Nimbic, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as better people, better projects, just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-701-7549. Better Exterior Solutions, experience better. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. Stop by the new car sales event happening right now at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. $500 in a job gets you and a Kia. And Michael Montiero and the staff here at Greenway Kia are here to make it happen. Experience great customer service and become a part of their family. And while you're here, check out the Kia Forte GT line. Full of comfort, innovation, and has driver assist technology. And how about the affordable new Kia EV9, the fast charging, all new electrical SUV with high performance capability, three row seats with 304 miles of maximum driving range. Over 1,000 new Kia models, some starting at $199 a month. 
And as always, get the 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. Come shop at Greenway Kia at the Avenues, located on Phillips Highway. You can shop online at GreenwayKiaAtTheAvenues.com. And remember, $500 and a job gets you in a Kia at Greenway Kia at the Avenues. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. And there it is in all its glory once again for the nth -teenth time. We have Jason Hamby's bracket right now. Kind of needed you to do a little better with Mississippi State a little bit. Don't ring the cowbell as Mississippi State was knocked off yesterday. But overall, Hamby, oh, this is, oh you guys filled out mine for my Hey, Hamby, was this your doing right here? Yeah, that was my doing right there. I had to help you out a little bit. work um how am i looking hamby like i mean i haven't even gone over the bracket this morning i feel like i'm doing all right i think all of my sweet 16 teams are still available so far which is what you kind of want so i'm not too mad at it right now a lot of things can happen though in the meantime there you go brent take it in drink it in brent you just had some wing <laughs> go ahead and have a, a nice little uh dessert now with my bracket uh, there we go. Uh, sorry if we popped out for a second there. I had to change the battery on the uh, the old camera. We got power issues uh, here, not because of best bet. I don't think I, I, this is goofy. I can't wait to solve this is issue later with you, uh, Steve Sesnick and, and Jason Hamby. But I've got lights on all over the place, and the mm -hmm. power is still not uh, going to the cameras at times. But um, I think I replaced it uh, in good fashion. So do you like where your bracket sits right now? I think so. Like I, I told Hamby, I haven't really checked it yet to see how well I'm doing, but I feel like all my Sweet 16, uh, sweet 16 teams are still available. So, yeah, I think overall I like where I'm at right now. Is Hamby talking to us? How does uh, How's his bracket? Hold it up. Well, that's not too bad, fellas. Do we you know. want to run through each of ours? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we'll go to Brent. We'll go to yours real quick. All right. Let's take a peek at it. And uh, here's the deal. I thought I did pretty well with some of the upsets. You kind of like when you, you know, you're obviously taking a big chance. NC State, I think that was a reasonable upset pick. There's that 11. Remember yesterday on the show we said the 11s have become the new 12s? Yeah. In terms of upsets, since 2011, they've actually made as many Sweet 16s as the five seeds. Well, the 11s did unbelievable last night. Duquesne, that was another big win. I've got them going to the Sweet 16, so if they can get one more, that would be awesome. Uh, South Carolina lost as a six seed, so uh, there's another six seed that goes down. Now, I had South Carolina winning the game. And then I hope Clemson does not lose in the 6-11 game today because <laughs> I got Clemson going very far. But it's pretty wild that that 11-6 game has been the upset special and continues to do so uh, here in the NCAA tournament. So um, we'll see if that holds true for a long time. I got Iowa State and Clemson. I don't think many people have that on that side of the bracket. So nope. if for some reason I get lucky, uh, that would be pretty good. I do think Gonzaga, people will probably pick them a little bit to be more from the Cinderella than the favorite role. And once again, that... Uh, that bottom right quadrant, if you will, has Purdue, and there's not a lot of love for Purdue, I think, in many people's brackets to go the entire way. Well, it's interesting with Gonzaga, too. I think people are doubting him, not as talented of a roster as they had in the past. McNeese, so was it McNeese State or just yeah, McNeese, McNeese State? McNeese State. Yeah. Uh, I think Gonzaga was only like seven and a half or eight point favorites in that game. A lot of people were on McNeese while Gonzaga took care of business and leaving no doubt in terms of their experience and also some of their talented players as well. All right, Hamby, let's take a look at another one. What do you got? Uh, you going to Austin? You going uh, you? Yeah, well, you tell us to, the next uh, one to go. As we... We're going to go back to Austin's here. 
You run this show here from uh, mm. Best Bet St. Augustine, and uh, had good to see uh, Coach Kevin Sullivan and Coach Ripley stop by uh, here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Got to say hello to those guys, and uh, crowd starting to build as we get closer to these uh, 12 o'clock tips in day two of the NCAA tournament. Austin has UConn winning it all. How else did you do, Austin, in the first round? I think overall it did okay. Um, BYU uh, screwed me over a little bit. It's the last time I ever take them in anything. <laughs> Um, it is what it is. Uh, Kentucky, obviously, I mean, I had them winning, you know, <laughs> against Oakland, but I didn't have Kentucky going too far. I thought their youth was going to be a detriment to them, and thankfully I was right there. So I don't have Kentucky going too far. Um, overall, so far, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Like I said, I think all my sweet six, 16 teams are still there, if I'm not mistaken. That's a... or, no, Kentucky. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. I had Kentucky beating Texas Tech, so never mind. Didn't even matter. Yeah. Texas Tech could beat as well. So yeah, had... but, but you get – this is where you Everybody get the benefit here a little bit, though. You had Marquette, and so yeah. having Marquette is is a big deal rather Correct. than having Kentucky. Like, I had Kentucky, I think, all the way into the Elite Eight, so yeah. uh, you lose that facet of it. Yeah. Um, as Hamby, we'll pull yours up and also Zach's up in just a second. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, obviously we everybody does a bracket, so we're doing our brackets too. But also we picked Zach Fortner uh, from the pile of contest entries yesterday. He's playing for the people, and uh, if he beats one of us, he gets a certain prize, dollar amount. Two of us, kind of double it up. Three of us. Pull it up. So cool. that's kind of the plan. And there's a I lot riding on this, Brent. Keep in mind, because with the last name like Fortner, redemption is a big <laughs> thing right now in the city of Jacksonville. So not only does he have the bracket to worry about, but also the entire city of Jacksonville, I feel like, is rallying behind Zach Fortner right they now. They might be or not. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I mean, you know, come on, man. <laughs> Make that name great again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's a chance to do that. Uh, so um, hopefully we'll see how Fortner is doing. Let's check him out. Let's see what he's got. He's got Tennessee, of course. That would be the big one. He's got UConn, Baylor, Tennessee, and Florida. So Florida's big. And this is perfect timing. I wanted to get on Florida. Can Florida make a run here? They just knocked – well, they didn't. But Kentucky got knocked out of that part of uh, the their bracket. So if they can win today, which they've been very good in these opening round games, uh, they then would get Marquette, and that would be the the big test. Yeah. Uh, you know, listen, you eventually might have to take care of a hot team too, like NC State, who won five in a row to win the ACC, won the first one last night. They're going to get Oakland next. Like they might be really hot, but the bottom line is that could be this could be a pretty good path for the Florida Gators if they can overcome their latest injury. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is definitely a guards tournament, or at least I thought that until I saw Texas Tech play last <laughs> night. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but this should be a guards tournament. Florida has a lot of those guys. Um, you know, they, they've been the kind of the same story the, the entire year. They've been underrated. I think they've been slept on a little bit in terms of some of the other powerhouses. Well, we say powerhouses now, like how it's turning out, but some of the other talent in the SEC. I think Florida can definitely make a run, but that Marquette game, if they make it past the first round, is going to be a big test for them if Marquette can win too. Well, you said, I mean, the Florida guards are really good. Here's the deal. Florida can really score the basketball. Like, that's the thing. They're fun to watch. They will put up points. Their defense can be a little shaky. And keep it this – Keep an eye on this, because I think people watching Gators real close this year know this probably even better than me. But they'll build big leads, mm -hmm. and multiple times this year, they've either blown the leads or almost blown the leads. Like, slamming the door shut can be tough sometimes, and in part because they're not great on the defensive side of the floor. Um, and once that offense goes away, well, then you can go on these droughts, right? So yeah. uh, it'll be something to watch. I do think they have a team that's made for – this time of year, though, uh, we'll see how much the, the injury impacts. That was a big injury for them, but the guard play still reigns supreme, and uh, they will be able to score it, in my opinion. So they get going today with Colorado. I expect them to win that basketball game. I mean, it's hard to do that, hard to just expect anything to happen this time of year, but I really think uh, Florida's in good shape today to at least get this first round win. Uh, that'd be at 430 game, by the way. For the Florida Gators. All right, Hamby, let's see yours now. I know we've uh, taken a peek at it. You're tied for first in our... Taking a peek? We have a memory at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, did you guys we have like a bunch the, of people uh, in first place, the by the way. Yeah, what was it? Martin O'Mandis what? Management. Management. After your I anger even... management issues. <laughs> yeah, very good. Could be more angry if I don't win. It's a nice touch. Um, I wasn't too angry at Pac-Man Machine yesterday. Uh, you've got Houston winning it much like I do, but you have UConn and Bama is your interesting one there like coming out of that uh, lower left side. 
of the bracket. And you had UK into the Elite Eight. You've got Florida. Man, I guess around here, it wouldn't have been a bad play to pick against Florida. True. Because a lot of people have them, right, or kind of rooting for them, don't want to pick against it. But uh, you've got a big upset on that side with Western Kentucky beating Marquette. I got Marquette, Marquette going down Hamby. today. Mm, wow. Wow. We'll see. I'm not, not going to say anything, man. I'm not like, going to jinx it. Yeah, you got to pick one fifteen over two, and that was the one I felt the best about. Well, and to be fair, Hamby, Marquette was the biggest team in terms of the biggest upset that people picked against. So, like, in terms of, like, I think a one or a two, most people had Marquette losing uh, today. It was so, pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, I, it might be the injury thing with, with Tyler Kolek, but once again, I'm pretty sure he's, he's playing. Not playing. So, I think the story all along was he was going to miss the Big East tournament yeah. and then be back to play. So we'll see if he does, yeah. uh, unless people know more. You have Duquesne as well. I mean, Duquesne was a great win. I think it was our first NCAA tournament win in like 51 years. You've got him into the Sweet 16 as well, Hamby. I, I did the same thing. Yeah, I mean, that's. I don't even know where Duquesne is. I don't know anything about uh, the basketball program. But uh, it was a unique name, and uh, we're riding with it. And uh, all right, <laughs> also uh, FAU and uh, Northwestern just tipped. Yeah, they did just tip off. FAU is like the Cinderella a year ago, and uh, they now go in as like a team that might be one to be reckoned with, although they're going to have to play a top seed most likely in round number two. So we'll see uh, how FAU does this year as the eight seed going against Northwestern. It's funny you said that about Duquesne. Uh, Kaylee was, she fills out a bracket. She doesn't pay attention to college basketball much. She fills out a bracket. She's like, I don't even know how to say this name. Yeah. Right? And uh, I think last year on the show, or most recently we were calling it Duquesne. <laughs> and so I, I saw a great tweet last night, and uh, it's Duquesne against Illinois in the next round, mm -hmm. and the loser has to pronounce their S. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I don't know if okay. the winner has to pronounce their S or the loser has to pronounce their S. Okay. <laughs> Illinois decayed. A nice little um, play on the alphabet at the very least, the silent S in both of those names. Unless you're an Illinois guy, oh they, no, they're Illinois in Wisconsin. No, they don't. Well, they, they say so, they say something. I ain't gonna say what they say about <laughs> Illinois in Wisconsin. That's because you know. I mean, it's it gets pretty messy over there, man. So I ain't gonna say anything about it. Um, but uh, anyway, that's the latest on the NCAA tour. It just kicked off. You can ch check it out uh, wherever you are, of course, on CBS 47 and uh, TBS and TNT and True TV. CBS 47 will have a bunch of the games, of course, throughout the day, too. And uh, we're checking them out right here. as uh, They've got them on already on the TVs behind us. Best bet. St. Augustine here on a Friday, which we anticipate being a very busy day going into the weekend. We just were talking to Mike Barry about it. Really picked up yesterday. Uh, same thing after our show. We kind of kicked the day off at 10 a.m right when the doors open, and then lunch hour starts to uh, get going into the afternoon and into the evening. And once again, if you're down here at Best Bet St. Augustine, $100 lucky seat winner every half hour. If you're over there in the uh, table room, poker room, uh, you might get a tap on the shoulder, get a free 100 bucks. So not a bad deal to come down to Best Bet St. Augustine here on this Friday and watch the NCAA tournament games as well, not just today. But all weekend long, uh, does is there a game that uh, intrigues you today? Is it Marquette how they play? Yeah, I, I know you have interest in Marquette anyway, but because of their situation, does he play? How well does he play? Will that give us an indication if okay they can maybe ride with this into a run to the Final Four potentially? Because they might have that good of a team. No, for sure. I mean that one definitely intrigues me. Um, just to see like, what's it going to look like. I mean, if we're probably talking about the biggest, and once again, I'm kind of a, a biased and I'm a homer, but everyone's on this James Madison team right now, yeah, taking on Wisconsin, they are. you know, in the classic 12 5 matchup for an upset. So I think that could be an entertaining game later tonight at 9 40 uh, on CBS Friends. So check your local listings Thank there. You. You're welcome. And um, any other games that are really. Oh, here's one that's got my attention. Hit me with it. Because we just saw Kentucky go down. Mm -hmm. So will we see Duke go down? Duke and Vermont. Uh, there it was a 14-3 game for Kentucky. Obviously, uh, the 13-4 is Vermont. Vermont has been there a ton. Mm -hmm. Vermont's like an annual in the dance, coming out of the America East. I think they're still in the America East. They got to be still in the America East. Um, they know this. They know how to play this time of year. Sure, they're not going to be afraid of Duke. Yep. And I'm assuming it's the same thing. Duke's probably really good. Yep. Well, will it matter? Duke is always very disappointing because they're very good. Yeah. 
So I actually think that one's one to watch, Vermont and Duke today. That game comes up, by the way, later tonight at 7-10. And I think Purdue's going to handle business, but I think getting off to a nice start for Purdue yeah. is probably comforting for them since they lost last year in the same spot. So I wonder what that can do to kind of get them on the right train. And then you talk about confidence. Isn't Houston looking for a little? Oh, they need right? it. After yeah. they got blasted. By 30 points. Yeah, exactly. and you guys need it too because uh, you have them in your final four, so you're already winning. Um, yeah, and also keep in mind with Vermont and Duke, the, the battle of the most useless uh, school nicknames of all time, the Blue Devils and the Catamounts. Not sure what a Catamount is. Not sure exactly how a Blue Devil fits into everything. But, um, yeah, two of the, of the more obscure, I feel like, mascots of this entire tournament. Well, listen to what I just said, though. It, you don't usually – sit there on day one or two of the NCAA tournament and say, well, I'm interested to see how the top seed plays, mm-hmm. right? The number one seed. But I really think on this day you are looking at Houston and you are looking at Purdue and kind of seeing how they react. Because here's one thing about Purdue. If they get tested by grambling and it's like a tight game in the second half, whoo, how tight is Purdue going to get? They just lost in this spot. They had to hear it for the last 365 days. They're here again, and could they lose again? So and they, I think the first 10, 15 minutes, really the first half probably of that game, probably very important for Purdue. And like I was saying, Houston, listen, they're way better. They might win by 30. They really might. But I think they have some questions going into the game, and it, that's just not a usual thing when you're play, playing a 16 seed. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree with you. So we'll we'll see what uh, happens on uh, on that front today. NCAA tournament day two, really fun stuff and good stuff. Hopefully your bracket uh, looks okay. We'll we'll check back on Monday and uh, see how. Um, everybody's doing coming out of the weekend. Speaking of Monday, I'll be at the NFL owners meetings on Monday, and I threw some things at you guys today. Let me make sure I find it correctly uh, in the email. But there's some rule changes that everybody's considering. The competition committee gets – like these NFL owners meetings aren't just there to be there and go to a nice hotel. and They actually <laughs> do things. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, okay. they do things with the um, – competition committee and they work on you know they vote for stuff against stuff eventually we'll get to a place where the jags are uh you know trying to approve a stadium through an nfl owners meetings that could come up as soon as may it might come up a little bit later on in the summer but as for the on the field football stuff there's actually some things going on uh here in the nfl competition committee and what they might be looking at one of them is the kickoff stuff Mm mm-hmm What they think about the kickoff, by changing the rules the way they want to do it, that it could actually add three to five yards in field position to each average drive, which would boost scoring even more, and that every entity that is sports wants to boost scoring every more. Do you realize that the scoring has actually dipped down in the NFL each of the last three years? Really? It's pretty surprising, isn't it? I I was not aware of that, no. That was really surprising. I felt like the, the Bengals-Jaguars game itself should have put it over the echelon. But I don't know. If we don't feel that that's a problem, does it matter that it's declining slightly each of the last three years? Like, are these guys over analyzing how much scoring matters to view the game, be entertained by the game? No, Yeah, I think they're definitely overanalyzing it because scoring matters more from a fantasy perspective. And I play a lot of fantasy football, and I didn't know. It's like, oh, you know, these guys aren't scoring as much as they used to. So I think they do overanalyze things sometimes. I understand touchdowns uh, and scoring is the name of the game. It pays the bills and everything. But you also got to keep it within reason in terms of how much is too much. All sports want the scoring up. We're talking about college basketball, right? Yeah. NBA. Hockey has done various things over the last decade to 15 years to try to increase scoring. The NFL, college football, like the rules all cater to the Hockey and everything, yeah. Do yeah, you yeah. think overall sports are, I mean, I, I get we don't want a 6-3 to three game. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I get in baseball it's like one to nothing is more boring than 15-11 to 11, mm-hmm. where the Padres and Dodgers played. I understand the bigger bases, get the running game involved, take away the shift a little bit, right? Get the offense going a little bit. It's hard to hit a baseball. So, I, like, do the sports have it right? Or do they overdo it, saying, hey, we've got to cater to that element. The fan is so fascinated with more, more, more. I mean, me as a 
defense or a former defensive player, obviously I'm biased in saying that it's too much, but I'm not naive to the fact that fans are what make sports. Fans are what make sports so great. It's why, you know, you surround yourself in a stadium with strangers. Like, it's just that atmosphere. So if that's the case, then, yeah, I don't think that, like, scoring has to be done because it's an emotional environment. And emotion is tied off to scoring and celebrating and things like that. Or else booing if things don't go your way. But needless to say, what that all has in common, the common constant and all that, is scoring. So I get what everyone's trying to do. I'm not opposed to it, like, as a former player. I am, obviously, but as a casual fan, or as more more of a, I won't say a diary fan, but as a fan who follows a lot of sports, I get it. Yeah, you kind of get what they're doing. How about, I want to ask you about this one as a defensive player. How about the um, hip drop tackle that's being viewed right now? That's another one that that they're going to talk about. And the officials came out yesterday and said they support trying to uh, get rid of that. But the players... Ha- are against it. They've of objected course. to that yeah. as, as um, being penalized for it. Now, what's interesting about this, from the way I understand it, it's not going to be like a 15-yard penalty necessarily um, every time they would do it, but it could be a fine or a Monday conversation, yeah. which actually leads to getting it out of the game, the practice of it, getting the mentality of it, uh, much like they've done with some of the uh, the way you tackle. It, like in college football, they went, boom, right to target, you're out. NFL didn't really do that. I think there were a lot of notes and fines and everything else that still take place around the National Football League, even by running backs, right? It was like Saquon Barkley or somebody. Like, if you lower your head, you're getting fined for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not necessarily getting a penalty in the game. So I think the hip drop tackle could actually um, do something similar before it would become like a 15-yard penalty, maybe in a couple, three years, whatever may be the case. But do you think it's a dangerous play? Well, I mean, it's yeah, it's not the safest play just because if you roll up on, you know, if you do the, the hip drop tackle, we call it the gator roll. You gator roll somebody, there's always a chance of their, their leg getting stuck. You know, you can tear an ACL, you can tear everything in your knee. Like, yeah, it, it's a dangerous thing. Football is dangerous, though. Okay, and if you're saying that now you can't wrap up and try to roll somebody in a tackle because maybe that's all you can do, and now you can't do that, or it's going to be a penalty, it's going to be a fine, I think it's taken a little too far. Like, I understand player safety is the number one priority, and kudos to the NFL for doing that. At least you tell us it's the number one priority as we have a 17-game season now, and who knows, maybe one day it'll be an 18-game season. I get trying to keep players safe, but you have to keep within reason in terms of What's a like? What's a standard football play and what's not? And I think that hip tackle is a pretty standard football play. And now, if you ask players to change their whole routines of tackling, then just make it two hand touch. I think they've tried to make, you know, they've tried to make it as safe as they can. I don't know if you can avoid that. I mean, if I'm chasing down a guy and I gotta just. <laughs> Do whatever it takes to get him down. I, I I don't know what other way you're supposed to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Can you make it part of the, you know, subconscious, if you will, to try to avoid it? I think absolutely. I think we've learned that. I think you guys as pass rushers have learned that. Mm-hmm. You now tackle the quarterback and roll off. That was not a natural thing for years and years, but now you've been taught to do that well, so you're not driving yeah. people into the dirt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and thank God I never had to go through that either in terms of, like... Yeah, that changed that yeah, for you, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I we hit the Houston Texans, I had whatever those four quarterback hits, or five, like, you better believe, was it Matt Schaub we, we established who had, like, 500 yards passing yes. that one day? Yes, yeah. he did. You better believe I lowered my helmet into his chest every single time. <laughs> wasn't wasn't taking anything off, like, right, hey, Matt, let me help. No, man, like... You know, you're, you're going to suffer the wrath a little bit. By the way, that would have been uh, okay. Like, you could give up the 15 yards that way just to send a message in that game after he th- while he's throwing for 520 yards. I could give him the people's elbow, and it would have been something. Like, yeah, the, we, we obviously needed something to happen because 500 yards is ridiculous. That is uh, not good. Brent Martin, Austin Lane, Brent and Austin Show, live at Best Bet St. Augustine. You know, with these owners' meetings coming up on Monday, again, we'll be there early in the morning. Really, we're going for like a half hour. I mean, Doug Peterson talks at the AFC Coaching Breakfast. Uh, I'll probably have the show from there as well from 10 to 1 uh, here on the Brenton Austin Show on the Action Sports Jacks Network, uh, 24-7 network. Will you be like in the the hotel or are you in the parking lot? (laughs) I I think we'll be in the hotel. Okay, nice. Uh, Hopefully hopefully we'll be in the hotel with Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Coming from the parking lot and on the tailgate of his truck. Can't wait. Yeah, that is probably not going to work anymore with this new (laughs) setup. That's Uh, a good point. uh, That has changed for me. That's why like we're 
clamor or scrambling a little bit here as some of the power was knocked out. I was like, wait a minute, you can't just hear us. I can't send you a picture. Yeah. I actually started to do that to Hamby. I was going to send him a picture. Well, you can use this as a video. Like, oh, no, wait, we need the video mm-hmm. uh, for the audio, too. So we're in a different setup now. I'm learning along the way. But as you go into the owners' meetings, one last thought on the NFL. Is, uh, is the game in a good place? Like, is there a lot to change? Is there a lot to, like, like, does anything bother you about the NFL the way it is right now? I'm in terms of the rules and everything. I think well, not even just, just yeah, this is the game. I mean, these guys are the keepers of the game in sure. many respects, too, right? Yeah. They, no, they've increased I'm... the salary amount. Players are making more and more money. The CBA is what it is right now. They've, uh, from, from drug testing to safety protocols to... Uh, I mean, I maybe is the gambling part, the betting part, something that continues to evolve and gets discussed. I don't know, but yeah. I'm trying to think of the state of the NFL right now, and and what the what's really what are people clamoring about that? Oh, they better change this. The biggest thing is probably the celebration still. Like players can get away with a lot more, but I still think you just let them go wild, man. I think celebrations are such a cool thing. Really? Um, yeah, I really do. I think like listen. It's not easy to get to the NFL. It's not easy to stay in the NFL. And it damn sure and easy to score a touchdown. So if that's the case, man, do your celebrations. Have fun. Use props if you want to. Like, okay, keep it within reason. Like, don't embarrass yourself. Don't make an ass out of yourself. Don't embarrass your team by any means. But have fun, man. Like, I'm so reminded of, like, some of the cool things that Ocho Cinco did back in the day. Or, like, Terrell Owens, man. Like, the, like imagine Terrell Owens back in the day with the popcorn. Or, like, yeah, yeah. Chad Johnson with, like, the Hall of Fame jacket. You, you do those moments now, like, that's, that's, that's the meme of the year. And I think if you're trying to grow the brand, if you're trying to get, like, more eyes on it, because, you know, Taylor Swift can only do so much, then let some more celebrations happen. Well, that's an interesting way to look at it. I, I didn't, that didn't come to mind, but that's why I asked the question. That, that might be something you have. I think the number one thing fans complain about is not necessarily something that gets complained about inside the building. You know where I'm going? No. Officiating. Oh, sure, yeah. I think fans, like, are, they think the officiating is awful. Mm-hmm. If you ask NFL people, they're like, these guys do a good job. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, everybody has their moments, right, like where you're complaining about a call. But I think Roger Goodell up at the Super Bowl was like, our officiating is fine. I think when you talk to people like inside even the Jags building, they're not complaining about officiating. Again, we have instances where if you catch somebody on a Monday after a game or a Sunday after a game, or even the player will be like, what the hell? But overall, inside buildings, that is more of an outside the building thing where fans are like, these guys stink and they never get it right. And robo officials <laughs> you know sure, yeah, yeah i don't yeah. i don't i think there's an interesting disconnect there between fans watching on sundays and every other day the nfl product and what people feel like internally um needs to be fixed yeah i mean i, I know the the ufc should do this because like judging and officiating has been so bad in the ufc lately when it goes to decision but you can make the same arguments if you're a fan of the nfl where there should be like a post press conference for refs you know, like if, uh, if you yeah. messed up something, like kind of explain what you were thinking here, why this call went the way that it did, um, just try to justify everything. And I think, like, I think there's grounds for that. You know, I mean, players got to get interviewed all the time. Players got to, you know, face the reality and and get in front of the camera, stare down the barrel, if you will. Maybe refs should have to do the same thing. Yeah, um, I guess that. Do you have to make them full time? Has always been a thing. Mm-hmm. Do they have to? Do, they do a pool report now, especially when there's anything crazy. But they do a pool report. Um, should they be doing more? Um, could they do more? Maybe that is something. I, I don't see it coming anytime soon. Uh, I think the pool report probably is fine enough uh, for right now. But it's just it strikes me that when you go to these meetings, or when at least the meetings were on the verge, it, there would be all these different topics to talk about and fix and and where the game's at. I really don't feel. It. I mean, we're 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 wrestling over a kickoff. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing, or a hip drop tackle. Well, I mean, like, that's where we're at. They're saying the tush push, but obviously that didn't go through. That which did, it, it that, shouldn't have because you agree with that. Any any team can do the tush push. It's just the Eagles are really good at doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's, it's a quarterback sneak. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the dish push either. Yeah. Um, but I never had a problem with, like, the extra point, and they moved that back, too. True. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but 
Yeah, but to me, the extra point was more of just, like, it was a free B. Like, I, I think it makes a little more... Like, I'm not mad at the extra point can move back, honestly. I know kickers hate it. No, but... I, I'm not I'm not mad at it either. I think kickers are probably over it by now, too, and I think they're fine with it. But I think where it relates to tush push is not necessarily right now, but let's just say in five years that everybody gets good at the tush push. Gotcha. And so everybody's doing it. Not just the Eagles are good at it and nobody else can do it, but if everybody figures out how to do it, yeah. and it's, like, automatic on fourth and one, you're getting a first down, Yeah, yeah. then I think they could... Say yeah. okay, you can't do it. I hear you. You know what I mean. It's, if anything, like I would just change the name of the tush push because the, the, the word tush is just it's so cringy <laughs> to me. Uh, it, it's like a it's like a kindergarten like, PE teacher using that verbiage. But besides that, I have no problem with it. Uh, well, we'll see what the kids' corner would have to say about something <laughs> like that. Hey, hey Hamby, where's where's the kids' corner on the on the uh, on the word tush? Are we yeah, for I'm that out. or against it? I'm out. Right, kind of no awkward, thanks. right? A little cringy. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. It, it, like you know what I thought about it. Brent used a tip this morning. <laughs> the thing about the thing about Tush. Uh, first of all, we're all looking for like a shortcut or a rhyme or whatever. So Tush Push it yeah. makes sense, right? Everybody coined it. Of course. But the thing I like about it is, I feel like that's something my mom would say. It's a nice connection to the past. Okay. So. Oh, so I'm that's sorry. Used you, in the present. Do, do you think moms are rejoicing in the fact they're using tush push right now? <laughs> they might be. Because like, I can tell you my mom, my, my mom could care less, man. <laughs> I don't know if my mom bottom. has ever heard of it. <laughs> the bottom? <laughs> I think tush is better. Tush is better than bottom or rump. No, man. This, here's, the, here's the issue with it, really. I think it, well, my problem stems from its football. It's a violent, physical game. No one on the field is using the verbiage tush. <laughs> like, no one's like, you, you think... I'm trying to think, give, give me a player who's very vocal on the Jaguars. Dewey. You think Dewey, you know, maybe like if he gets a good tackle or something like that, you think he's going on and say, hey, man, I'm going to kick you in the tush if you do that again. Like, you know how ridiculous that sounds? Do you know how, how much street cred you lose if you use the word tush in a, in a sentence? Yeah, I wonder if okay. the players actually have said it out loud or I'm just everybody Terriani, like even allows it. Because that, that dude feels pretty hardcore to me. You think Seriani uses the word tush? I doubt it. <laughs> Dom definitely uh, hey, let's doesn't. Take one final time. Dom ain't using Dom that either, did. man. Dom got his tush pushed <laughs> out of there. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back uh, live from Best Bed St. Augustine, uh, we'll put a bow on a week uh, here in Jacksonville and Brenton Austin show on our Action Sports Jacks 24 7 network. What's happening this weekend? Things to watch outside of the NCAA tournament. And again, we'll be in Orlando for a short time Monday for the owners' meetings coming up, the spring owners' meetings here in March, coming up in April. But yeah. Onto the Masters for a day. And uh, then we got our draft coverage. Shock your mock season right around the corner. So get them ready. And that's going to feature some bracket play as well. We'll be right back. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. 
homegrown in your hometown. Bold City, heating and air. I've been forecasting the weather for a long time, and no matter where I go, I always get asked the same question. Hey Mike, what's the weather gonna be like? Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Mike, hey, what's the weather gonna be like? I don't mind being asked because I always have the answer. Great day for a perfect round of golf. Hey, a little rain later today. So go ahead, ask me. Hey Mike, I'm heading out. What's the weather like tonight? It's the same question, even at home. Mike Burrish, he's got your weather answer on Action News Jacks. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton, easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Things are heating up, and the UNF baseball and softball teams are warmed up more than a third of the way through their seasons, and both Ospreys teams on the diamond are off to good starts. Recent Pitcher of the Week honors in both sports. Both teams have done well with the home cooking early in their schedule, and the early tests on the road have gone well, too. The A-Sun season is here now. UNF baseball and softball trying to make some noise in conference play. Go watch the Ospreys play. Go to UNFOspreys.com for more information on schedules and tickets. Plus, keep up with all the sports results and stories. UNFOspreys.com. When strong storms threaten and your safety is on the line, nothing beats accuracy. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish and the First Alert Weather Team. Your safest place to be during a storm is Action News Jax. I'm Action Sports Jax Stuart Weber. Please join me and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation in Northeast Florida for our annual Take Steps Walk right here at Memorial Park on April 13th. The event is dedicated to finding cures and raising awareness for digestive diseases. Join us by registering now at actionnewsjacks.com. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Hey, welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show. Florida Gators playing at 4.30 today. Basketball against Colorado. By the way, I saw somebody say Colorado has moved to a slight favorite in that basketball game, which surprises me a little bit. But uh, we will see what happens with the Florida Gators against Colorado. I'm trying to see right now if I got an updated uh, a line. I've got Florida one and a half, but uh, somebody else said Colorado now favored by one and a half. I guess it depends on which book. Northwestern okay. beat Florida Atlantic 12 to 11 in the early going. Baylor up 10 to 4 over the Toothpasters. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> they, they worked so hard to get to the tournament, and you got to refer to them as the Toothpasters. I love it. It was a year that Colgate was really good. Um, they had the big shot blocker. Or is that Hartford instead of Colgate? I thought there was like a team from up. Oral Roberts? No, 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 no. no. This was okay. years ago. Years ago. Okay. Uh, you were, you had said the name Okafor. It's kind of like that name. Okay. I don't, but I forget his name. I believe it was a big shot blocker. I thought he played in the NBA too. I, I can't remember if it was Colgate or like Hartford that had him. I'm pretty sure it was Colgate that one year. I remember he was kind of the talk of the tournament, at least in the early going in the first round. Well, you just said, uh, oh, go ahead. Speaking of big men, uh, DJ Burns, anybody? Did you watch him last night? Oh, yeah, State? he's a big dude, man. Pushing what, 280? I thought it was oh, a, maybe, was it more than that? Was it a different kind of body shaming that after the fact, I don't know the whole story there, there's got to be something to it, but they brought him ice cream in the post-game interview. Oh, did they really? <laughs> hey, are you talking about the, the announcers did? Yeah. 
And then he, where, I think he handed it off to somebody else. Okay, well, where's their Instagram hate? Because I made one comment about Patrick Mahomes and the shirt off, and I get roasted. And these guys are bringing this dude ice cream on national television. Yeah, I think there might have. I just saw a clip on it. I didn't see it, right, the whole well, thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make I'm, some comments. I, 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 my guess is there's something more to that story. I'm push the narrative. But though. the first thing I could think of was was that. Yeah. Hey, Hamby, do you actually have that? We're going to get the NBA Slam poetry. Uh, do you have, uh, I should ask you this in the commercial break, but I'll ask you right here. You have that sound from um, the coach from Arizona? The yeah, I Dan got Munson uh, stuff. I got Lloyd and Munson, both of them. Okay. Uh, well, you tee it up then. Play whatever one. I, I want to get you guys' thoughts on this quick because I had like a get off my lawn moment mm. or the old, like, you, you got to know, I, I come from a belief that this college landscape has changed in many respects because of the power of the coaches now. Mm-hmm. And this. There was a soundbite that I heard about the whole Munson situation. Now, Dan Munson used to be at Gonzaga, longtime coach, was at Long Beach State for a long time. The, the story here is he got fired before the tournament, uh, before the conference tournament. They go on and win the conference tournament. They go to the NCAA tournament. They lose to Arizona yesterday. Arizo- Lloyd, Tommy Lloyd, the coach at Arizona, was – Obviously, is part of the tree and knows Munson very well, and so he'll end up commenting about that. Um, but the AD came out like over the last couple of days from Long Beach State and said, "Yeah, I don't think if we didn't make that move, we would have. We think it inspired them; it got them yeah. going." Well, the others, the thing that uh, impacts the rest of the coaching community is they don't like the fact that Munson got let go without any other time on his contract. So benefits gone, everything gone, right? Just pull the rug. Where a lot of these guys still have like another year or two and can figure things out in their future and everything else, and they didn't allow for that to happen at Long Beach State. So that's the setup. Uh, Hamby, you tell us uh, where you're going to go with it, but I want to get you guys' thoughts on some of this quick sound. All right, here's Munson first. There was kind of intense reaction today to some comments from your athletic director about kind of crediting the run in the NCAA tournament to the firing. And just need to ask you if you have any response to, to that. No. If, if, if it helped, then I'm really happy we did it because I wouldn't trade it for the job or any other job. I've said that all along. You know, if, if that's what spurred it, that's great. But, you know, I'm not – we'll never know because <laughs> that's how it played out. So we'll never know if it did or not. So I, it's not really worth talking about, but – all right, and then uh, here so the, is Tommy Lloyd on Arizona. Jumping in, Brent? No, no, you got it. Go ahead. All right. Make no bones about it. I wanted to kick Munz's ass. I mean, don't, 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 there's no, don't make any bones about it. We're competitors. I mean, I mean, so, you know, it's like playing against your, you know, I'm the little brother, and I've always been the little brother to all those guys. So, you know, sometimes little brother's got to fight back. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean I don't love Munz. I mean, I... I mean, I felt, you know, I mean, I almost do now, like tears starting to well up when I hugged him at the end of the game. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And, you know, people don't know what we go through with our families. And I think that guy gave 17 years to Long Beach State. And they fired him without another year in his contract. So, he, so he's walking out of this deal in 30 days with no benefits, no severance pay, nothing. I mean, that, that's when you, when you sit in my position and, and what, what we put our families through, I mean, I don't think that's right. And that guy does not deserve that because he's a great man and he deserves another job and another opportunity. So, I mean, that, that's where my heart goes out to him and his family because, you know, that, that's the other side. That's the stuff we talk about. We don't just talk about, you know, joking about the game and the Princeton offense, all that stuff. We talk about the real stuff. And, and so, you know, what's, what he and his family are going through is really hard right now. And I hope people understand that there's a whole other side to this business. And we know it's a tough business, but still, you know, he's got kids in college. You know, I mean, and, and like, you know, and our jobs are pretty special. They're specialty based, like not a lot of them out there. So, you know, I, I, I hope, you know, things go good for him because he deserves it. That's it. Listen, it's a very interesting, thoughtful response from the coaching community. <laughs> and my initial thought, guys, was it rubbed me the wrong way a little bit because it's like, wait a minute. We don't understand this. Like it. Welcome to the real world, dude. Mm. Like, I know you're coaching, growing up in the coaching world, in this big money world, in this big college basketball world. Who else gets laid off from their job and then has another year left? Like, that does, that's not commonplace in society. No, it's Like, not. if they do that to a teacher, if they do that most likely to any of us, like, you're not sitting there getting paid for being out or under um, – 
benefits. You have to figure that stuff out. Like, talk about a bubble these guys live in. These live, I mean, that's a bubble. Now, first, my thing was, wait a minute. Muntz has been coaching forever. He's probably made a good amount of money. I went and looked. He's making about 285000 a year. Again, very good. But that's different than the money that these guys are making. Arizona coach right there is making $5.5 million a year or $5 million a year. Like, he can go pay for his benefits. I get what he's saying a little bit on that side that it throws you for a loop, and this guy's not making just millions of dollars at Long Beach State. My guess in California, two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. I'm not sure if it goes that long. It's not working a second job. <laughs> you know, probably doing like Uber Eats or something as well. So, like, I can get some of that, but this is my problem with the bubble that the coaches live in. This is a bigger problem for me with the Nick Saban comments. Without admitting, hey, this is a little bit on us, right? Like, that's the what they want us to feel bad about their profession dude that's the real world like if anybody loses a job they got to go find another one and get benefits like why is that the norm well yeah i get what you're saying but it's also the norm when you give your time 18 plus how much how many years was there? Yeah, 17 years, years. Yeah, that's so a different seven, story did they sure. do them dirty yeah so yes. you, you give somebody your blood sweat and tears for 17 years and then you just get fired before the tournament like I don't care what kind of job that is. Anybody would tell you that's pretty cold as well, though. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a way to do business, right? There's a way to do business. Yeah. And I see both sides like, no, I'm not going to feel sorry for a basketball coach because of how hard it is. Like, yeah, that's what you signed up for. You signed up never, for it, man. I'll never this feel, isn't the military. No, for sure. So I'll never feel sorry for somebody, oh, that's what you wanted to do, okay? But at the same time, when you dedicate 17 years to one program, you give them your time, your effort, and your energy, and you get done like that, yeah, I think anybody would say that's not right and that's kind of unfair. So it's kind of I, – I, I hate to be on the fence about this thing, but I can see both sides. I, I can too. Like, that's what I came around to. At first, I was like, dude, really? What are we talking about? Don't sit here and tell the public, like, oh, you don't understand our way we put our families through and this and – Come on. Everybody would put our families through that for $5.25 million, Mr. Lloyd. Like, I guarantee you. Okay? Family? I'm just giving the money. Uh, so, what family? <laughs> so, hey, Hamby, just to let you know, like, the way the real world works, not the way these guys' world works, is if you get fired tomorrow, you probably aren't getting another year of benefits, buddy. Just learn that well, right now at 23 years old. <laughs> what I'm not understanding, and I need ex- explanation, is what is the difference between this and then his contract running out in a month and them not renewing it and him just not getting a contract extension? That is no different than what mine could do, right? Like no, my but contracts what is the come up between in 2025. Getting fired. No, if they're letting him finish yeah, the season, he, this is just yeah. like him oh, not getting a contract extension. Oh, I see why extension. do it that way. Yeah, I yeah. Well, so you're saying like the AD is not in the wrong by doing this, or he should have just let the contract run out. I'm just not understanding why this is a big deal because nobody bats so, an eye if at the end of the year they just don't give him a new contract and then he's got to go find somewhere else. Yeah, that, so you're saying they should have just let it. Well, I think what they were trying to do is get out in front of it so their job gets posted early so they get the early candidates. That's when the mechanics and timing of when you do something like that often depends on that too, Jason. So my guess is that, but then he got burned by it because yeah. they go on and win the conference tournament yeah. and make the NCAA right. tournament, and now everybody knows the whole situation. For sure. For sure. But, Hamby, were you trying to say, though, like – it doesn't matter if he would have got fired before the tournament or let like, go after. It's kind of the same thing, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, like, I mean, and I see where Hamby's coming from once again, but listen, 17 years into something, you can at least give him the, the honor of, of finishing the year and then going about it, I think. But I get trying to get ahead of the of the curve or whatever. You, you never know what's the dynamic of internally. Like, hey, maybe sure. months it's a pay to the butt. Maybe there's something that happened that we yeah. don't know about. Whatever. But here's what the problem for Long Beach State and this AD. They made the national news on it, right? They're the national talker. He's the talker. The way this went down doesn't look good for you. And it's nothing to do really with Munson. It's yep. got to do with your next hire. Yep. Now does that become a little bit more difficult True. all right uh, nba slam poetry to finish the show we got about five minutes to go here from best bet st augustine by the way best bet st augustine full calendar of events uh here in march as we get toward the end of it and another calendar coming up in april so make sure you get down here if you like playing poker all the different events but also the table games and watching the ncaa tournament that's what we're doing right after the show today NBA Slam Poetry, what you got? All right, I'm going to try to keep my voice down to a little bit of a minimum. It's going to be like a golf version? Scare anybody. Yeah, it could be a little too. Yeah, it could be a waste management um, Arizona golf <laughs> tournament. Uh, do we have music or not? I can't even. You might not be able to hear okay. it as well, well, but Hamby probably Tell me where to go, Hamby. 
Yeah, I hear oh, it. There, there it is. There we go. I got it now. The drinks are clinking. I think someone just lit a cigar. That's my doggy. You got the Aces bar over there. This right audio there. must be from like the 80s because you can't just look up a stogie anymore, I feel like, in a bar or anything. <laughs> but let's not get down that <laughs> Jamie path. Jamie was had one going this morning. He had one in here? Uh, he's he's not in here. Yeah, no. Oh, I was going to say. Come on, I have a fight coming up. All right, with that being said, <laughs> NBA Slam Poetry Farm Fresh, the best vibes you'll find in town. NIL bought the fire extinguisher. NBA G League Ignite is getting shut down. Did oh, you see that news? I did not. Yeah, they're shutting it down because the NIL college players going to college now don't want to opt out of college anymore. Sorry, G League. So good goodbye to the G League Ignite. D League. Um, they D-League. won two games this year, by the way. I think they're 2 and 23. <laughs> so, yikes. Boston already won the conference. They've been nothing but net. Don't put your money on the Raptors. They're bad. Unless Otani can cover your bets. Ooh. Hit the button if you got it. <laughs> That's a cringe one. Time will tell how serious that's going to be, but I had to throw Tani in there. Um, Houston won seven straight. As Hamby would say, they got the Riz. Hamby, you say that? Uh, no, say just Riz? the 14-year-olds. Just the kids. Okay, sorry. Houston won seven straight. As the kids would say, they got that Riz. Jalen Suggs has been doing his thing for Orlando, but much like Scotty Scheffler, nobody really knows who he is. He's a, he's a good player, trust me. If you do the Riz, you do the Wiggy, too. Jalen Suggs doing his thing, man. We got a 30-point buck. Dame time has been keeping the bucks on the right track. Shout out to Chet Holmgren for his new commercial. Your performance was right up there with Kazam with Shaq. You see this commercial? <laughs> no, I have not. You'll see it. <laughs> I have it, it's but I'm not terrible. surprised it's not good. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see it. Who thought that would be a good idea? You'll see it. <laughs> SGA is winning in OKC, but he's losing MVP steam. The front runners are Luka and the Joker. Why do the best players in the NBA look like the BYU basketball team? <laughs> Ooh. Where's Shimmer? Ooh. Something to <laughs> something to dwell on real quick. Two more here. Uh, Washington is out. They should stick to politics because <laughs> I'm sorry. Washington is out. They should stick to politics because ball ain't their thing. Hey, LeBron James is the next Taylor Swift. You be you're the most popular, but you can't get another ring. Hit the mm. button. Mm. That's a vibe. Taylor Swift, you know, yeah. Na, 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 na. So, M- so this has been NBA Slam Poetry. I hope your brackets aren't busted and you get lucky. It's the best sporting event of the year, unless you're rocking that blue and you're from Kentucky. Sorry, Big Blue Nation. <laughs> Sorry, Ashley Tun. Was it Ashley Tun, right? Ashley Tun. Sorry, Ashley Tun. Yeah. I was more of a white known a fan myself. Yeah. <laughs> see what I did there? I, I see what you ah. did there. I wanted to put an exclamation point on the week. There you go. It's been fun hanging out. Best bet, uh, St. Augustine. Come on down throughout the weekend, NCAA tournament. And again, until midnight tonight, every half hour, get in a seat. You might be a lucky seat winner. Free 100 bucks going your way every half hour at Best Bet St. Augustine. Enjoy watching the NCAA tournament, everybody. We'll see you from the owners' meetings coming up on Monday. See you on Action Sports Shacks primetime all weekend long, 1030 on Fox 30, 1130 on CBS 47. For Jason Hamby and Austin Lane, the entire Action Sports Shacks team, I'm Brent Martino. Hope your bracket doesn't get busted. One more time.